You're watching Tales from the Ten Lands, a Black Barrel Tavern production. Back to the plot! Hello everyone, and finally welcome back. Sorry for us missing a session within there, but as you can see from behind me, I moved! So, that took precedent. Housing is more important than D&D. Theoretically. Um, and that point is beside the mountain, and off we go. Are we ready to do a recap? No, but let's do it anyways. All right. <laughs> um, I did not write any notes uh, to all those who are watching, but let's see if I can make you think I did. Oh, Jesse. Oh, no. Good afternoon, class. Please sit down and take out your pencils for notes on the latest adventures of these whack jobs. We'll take roll. Bueller. Bueller. Last we left off, the adventurers had just completed traveling to the basement and to the lower levels of Dungrave Mine. They have been sent there to investigate certain uh, activity on the outside of the mine, arriving and finding it broken into. They delve deep, walk through a magical doorway, then fought a bunch of lizard people, and then a magical extraplanar guardian who was summoned and nearly kicked their ass. In order to survive, one of the party members, Bueller, Bueller, anyways, in order to survive, one of the party members opened a letter and made a deal with one of the ancient titans. This deal saved the party and took them out of the mine or the extra dimensional place they were in for their combat and returned them to the surface. They returned to town and added a new member to the party, Filigree, a.k.a. Philly. They settled in for the evening, ready and to prepare for their trip back to Lord Zundro's Manor, and then some of those party members had some deep discussions and arguments over choices made. As we pick up later, thank you for this review, but your homework tonight is to go and pay attention to the work of the party this evening and to see what comes of their journeys back to Lord Zandro's Manor in Tales from the Ten Lands. Guild, back to you. Beautiful, wonderful. I try to be. <laughs> So, we open up our current run, our current day. Oh, we've taken a long rest, haven't we? You have taken a long rest. For those that need to mark that down, you do get that long rest. Yay, I get my resources back. And get spells back. Yay. For some of us, we got hit points back. <laughs> All of those things are very useful. Are my feet still clean? <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. Well, so I have a... you've got a little bit of dirt on them uh, from walking around. So I have a couple clarifying questions. Because I'm not upset about this at all. Um, because I have like years and years and years and years and years and niggers of built up calluses. Wow. Um, able... Just 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 going to say this. Um, you said years enough times in enough fun ways that yeah. <laughs> it you... sounded like something else. It sounded a lot like something else to a point where it even got censored. No, uh, what is what? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I, certain... it was oh huh. hey, to be I fair, heard it. I was just gonna fair. move on past it, but okay. to, to be fair, I at some point you have to bathe, and that would rinse off the most of the dirt if you didn't actively scrub, it would still get rinsed. Well, okay, I'm not worried about the rinse, I'm worried about the built up calluses, so it doesn't hurt when I walk barefoot. That has that has nothing to do with being clean. Your calluses don't go away when you wash your feet. Yeah. I know, I have to use a pumice stone. It's very annoying. Bam. Yeah, we didn't use anti-stone skin. Your stone or skin is still there. There's no ra like razor blades taking it off. Like sometimes I know, but I'm still upset about well, that. Still upset. <laughs> she could have taken her dagger and just started shaving. You know, it would have been good tinder. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I do not want to sit next to a fireplace or a campfire with that stench coming out of it. I'm good. I'm offended <laughs> even more so now. Like, now I'm just upset. Like, now I'm just... You can't be offended because I'm offended that you're offended. Therefore, you can't be offended. Not... That's not how it actually that's works. Not, not... I don't think it, that's not how anything works. No, yeah. can't no but, you know. Dog stamp, a, a double dog stamp. Or something like that. The fence is an absolute value, not a positive or negative integer. It's also not how emotions work. Like I said, it's an absolute value, not a positive or negative integer. And there's a lot of people who don't know how emotions work, including people who use them. So where are we? Thanks, everyone, for joining us on our psychology <laughs> stream. I hope yeah, you're enjoying um, it so far. So uh, I have to... I am not. Uh, I'm just going to be totally transparent. I hate it here, and I would like to move on. <laughs> did, did Well, I was making... I, w I was equating emotions to numerical systems and understanding absolute values can only ever be positive in one direction. You can never have negative absolute values. Hey. Thank you for the math lesson, Professor Matt. So ultimately, what we're saying is your calluses would have stayed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You just don't stink you. and you don't okay. have the dirt. They're just clean, squeaky clean. Mm -hmm. The grime under your toenails is gone. That's very exciting. That's but not exciting. Have, That's You awful. still have the leathery feet. Like a half There's one. a soreness that you didn't realize you'd been feeling this whole time. And you're just like, wow, that stopped suddenly. No. My feet feel awful and <laughs> alone, singular. I, I'm just going to point out over by the river and be like, there's a little mud patch over there if you're really desperate to dirty your feet again. What's the existential feeling of alone feet? <laughs> <laughs> One day I will tell you, but today is not that day. <laughs> I have alone feet and I will go <laughs> jump in those mud puddles. Thank you very much. That is an interesting thought. Does does prestidigitation in unsoiling an object remove the bacterial colonies upon the surface of it, or does it sanitize it? I be, okay. I treat it like a sanitization and not necessarily a like removal. <laughs> uh, I want to have a stroke. <laughs> I would say all these things. It it removes the it removes the actual physical dirt, but it also sanitizes the surface. I mean, yeah. Oh, I guess man. I guess I can't imagine that the spell sort of has a well, because well, because presentation is not remove disease because you could yeah, not cure it's yeast just infection cleaning or soiling an object, and thus yeah. it would not remove any bacterial colonies. Hmm. Yeah, it's. Dawn dish soap, not antibacterial hand soap. Okay, but at the same time, uh, cleaning a surface wouldn't cleaning necessarily the remove the disease from within it. That's why so I asked if prestidigitation was cleaning or sanitizing. Are we really debating the sanitary levels of my feet? <laughs> yes. I think no, we're not. Agree agree you you were the agree one who brought up how dirty your feet were this morning. <laughs> I want them as dirty as fucking possible. So, like, and that takes years to hey, build hey, up. So, I hey, think. Brie, Brie. Uh, sorry. Silver, silver. silver. Um, 
I have a question about this because we're normally sharing a bed, which means sharing bedding with your dirty feet. Yeah. I'm not stroking your- Luna prefers that you would have clean feet. Okay. While we have to, our slum. To clarify, <laughs> I am not like rubbing my feet up against your like luscious calves. I'm just. <laughs> I I all I'm saying is just, I question the wisdom of dirty feet. That's all I'm saying. Well, I'm not again. I'm not rubbing your luscious luscious calves with my dirty dirty feet. Like I'm just. Oh. I'm just yeah. chilling. And there's a sheet, in all fairness. And this is why you're always out of the, the deposit for the hotel rooms. I broke Sarah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just, we just started. And this is, this is where we're going. I'm just telling you, we're, we're, I'm we're very upset tonight. about this. And no one is taking me seriously. And I feel offended. <laughs> I think this essentially ruins your chances with Fiocra. I'm not going to lie here. I mean, if you can't accept me at thirty feet, can't accept me at my best. <laughs> Please assume gonna, the crash position. The plot has the jumped the rails. <laughs> yeah, um, Scott pops up. Is like, you could just yeah. What what Luna said mm, curls back. I will up. start. Washing the oh, tops of my feet. How about Oh, that? yeah. Scott sleeps at the foot of the bed. <laughs> oh, I thought Scott slept oh. under the bed. <laughs> Not <laughs> last <laughs> night. <laughs> Not <laughs> last <laughs> night. Okay. Dirt. Let me be very clear. Okay. Listen. I like Listen. my feet. There's a very specific reason why I like my feet. It's not going to get anyone I... sick. I'm, I'm, you have been with me for how long, and this is just now a conversation? I think that says more about you guys than it does me, to be perfectly clear. I think it says more about us as players that we were willing to just hand wave this whole concept. <laughs> no, I, like, I, my, I thought you were wearing boots. No, I, I barefoot especially with the armor. Time, and now it's a problem because, ooh, I want to clean your feet. No, that's not how it works. I, I studied want you to know microbiology that thinking about your bare feet. Since session one, when I listened in, <laughs> my my inner microbiologist, because I did study microbiology in college for a bit, uh, is dying. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. this all says more about you guys than me, because I have no problem with bare feet. I have yet to get anyone sick, and I have slept with people. I have yet to get myself sick. It's fine. It's part of my culture. It's it's, it's fine. You know, it's culture, you know, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, you would do just, you would do perfectly at home here in Kentucky. <laughs> no. I got this. I I'm, I'm not saying what came to my mind right now. Silver, Silver, you say that it is part of your culture. I think yes. that if we are talking about you never washing your feet, I think that culture may be the exact appropriate word. Yeah, it's it's oh my god. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're in here. All coming down for breakfast. Uh yeah. Billy is probably like pulled up to the bar having breakfast beer, uh, and kind of looks over and goes, uh, you know, is there a reason you kept your feet so dirty? Was it you say it's culture, is it aesthetic? Like, do you wanna do you wanna explain so that the rest of us know going forward? But I will say sanitary reasons. You probably should sleep above the covers and let other people have access to unsoiled sheets if you're sharing bed space. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You you really want to know? I, I asked, so okay. go for it. It will be better if I could just if you could just go with me on this. Could you please take off your shoes and socks? In the no, bar? I won't. I or will in not. The eating this. establishment and per regulation, yeah. I believe that's yeah. very inappropriate. So, so am I. Has Silver never heard of ringworms. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you guys don't want to know, I won't tell you if this is just going to be a big old joke. <laughs> I'm quite fine. I figured with that. since 
I figure it's something to do with the connection to the earth because there's nothing uh, impeding between the soles of your feet and the earth. Therefore, you have a more direct connection. That's what I'm ga gathering. Mia, how the fuck did you guess that? It's pretty obvious when you think about the need to be barefoot and to feel <laughs> connected to the earth. I do, but there's a little bit more to it than that. But you know what? I think I'm just going to hold on to it because clearly it's a problem now, not like sessions before. Okay. You mean moons before? Then for frustration and your information, we can't I, know this. I think it's okay. just an issue because the joke of the night before, someone cleaned your feet and now you're worried about them staying clean. Yeah. Okay. Could you imagine? All right. <clears throat> that dirt I'm is more really than dirt. trying not to. <laughs> <laughs> dirt for me is more than dirt they're collective stories mm -hmm. of everything that we've walked through ran through fought through and it's a memorial of everything we've survived right <clears throat> and it also is a reminder the only time i really clean my feet or my hair or my suit is if i fail at something to wash it away and all of the stress you push down to your 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 gods and your ancestors and you can't do that with boots on it's not as it's so that way I, okay listen i am uh, i can see all of your faces but that's the if reason. i may out of I'll character if i may add this well. <clears throat> you have disturbed the dirt <laughs> so, so one out of character are you a fucking professional baseball player what's your fucking uh Two. Uh, okay, so in here, okay, so what you're saying is that normally you would not wash your feet or your hair or your clothes. I wash my hair. I meant to say face. That was a misspeak. That's somehow slightly <laughs> worse, but okay, so you don't wash your face your or your armor until you fail. But arguably, uh, depending on how you want to consider the series of events that led you to call on a not god to come rescue you from another not god deep in the caverns where you were getting your proverbials handed to you would that not be in a sense a failure and thus that was just a jump start on the ceremony no because i didn't fail as a matter of yeah. fact i was doing just fine it, yeah, thank you it's it's when i <laughs> you're okay so i'm the, the, one, I'm the one I'm the one that needs the bath then, because I'm the one that pulled everyone out. Your word's we... not mine, darling. I, I think <laughs> well, you touched I, on that two That means vulnerables. I would need one, too, because I failed to be the one to open my letter to pull everyone out. Oh, you guys touched I'm on I'm not two... going to complain if any of you take a bath, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, no, uh, I, uh, I, need my, I need my daily cleaning. I, I'm with Tall, Dark, and Wordy here. They, uh, they make a good point regarding cleanliness. Uh, you know what? Well, I'm not is my favorite nickname for Fiacre now. <laughs> so accurate. <laughs> so accurate. <laughs> you so know what? Good. I don't think we know each other well enough for me to, to give you my reasonings yeah. of how I define failure. Uh, okay. Do you, as as a as a point of clarification, you don't wash the armor or your face. Do you at least wash the garments? My bits and goodies. Have, yes. <laughs> well, I'm talking about like the clothing under the armor yes okay yes. <laughs> and yes. my bits so and goodies armor and all getting the other dirty things. i can okay. understand get... but the actual clothes because that stuff gets rank everywhere you have hair everywhere with the skin overlaps sometimes those are two things sometimes those are separate things <laughs> and always your ass that's you need all those places every <laughs> Did time I not clarify well enough i wash everything but my face and my feet okay and Armor. That clarifies Face, that feet. This. And <laughs> there's got to be another. Um, well, I mean, shell. when we another were in. F word for armor. We were um, in the place that had baths. There? And she like, did take there? a bath. Is what? that why we lost? Because she washed beforehand? I, we didn't did lose. it jinx us? Well, I didn't lose. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could change it to roots. Rafters and regalia, and then it would be like feet, face, armor. Yeah, but like, I, I, I like that. I like that. Hmm. Makes I like little. alliteration. I'm just gonna go. 
I'm gonna yeah, follow you. You were the one that brought this up. <laughs> yeah, because I want my feet back. How about how about silver? Silver, how about you and I? Uh, let's go for a walk and get you some more dirt on your feet. Thank you, Wait, Llama. Let's go. go. Were you defeated? <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. I felt that one in my soul, actually. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Their hips get way more swishy when they're angry. Look at them stomp away. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. She'll turn back and look at you and just wink, but then keep walking. <laughs> All right. Um, so. Scott watches uh, Luna walk away and then goes back to his cups. Yeah. I think that Scott's eyes were on a different set of hips, but in any case. Yeah. I don't know. What's your passive insight? <laughs> <laughs> well, all you know, during this whole conversation and whatnot, I'm it's the not good, about. darling. It's 12. I yeah, slipped out while you all were yapping like this. Also, where'd Mia Lee go? Oh, the Huntress? Um, yeah. I don't know. We, we team up on Huns. Um, he downs the rest of his breakfast ale, wolfs down the last of his food. I'm going to go make sure she's okay well, as well, all right. too. He if you're probably... all gone more than two hours, I will check each cardinal direction for you within 150 feet of me, so... See you yeah. in a bit. All right, cool. He goes out, and Scott is going to try to track down Mealy. Oh, um, not hard. She's just okay. Bianca's she still at the, the bar with uh, oh, okay. uh, 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 Philly. I just pour you another drink here, Bob. Yeah. Um, Scott finds uh, Mealy, pokes his head in, and is like, You good? I uh, just. I don't want to talk about it right now, but I'm writing down, you reminded me, I'm writing down everything that I needed to write down for a report to the Lord, bef to the, the Lord before uh, I forget again. Yes. Uh, on the way back, one, one or the other day, I would like to look at those. I'm putting together a murder board in my notebook. Well, I'm going to get either by today, tonight or tomorrow, I'll have everyone else's testimonies down. I'll okay. give each of them so you can take the short notes and then that way I'll have them presented for Lord Zandra so he can take his time and read them at his leisure. Yeah, I'm just trying to put together some other stuff that's been happening to all of us and figure some things out, Not big a... picture shit. No problem. Right. I, I'm almost done with my book. I just want to write this while this is still fresh in my brain. Yeah. Uh, Scott starts to leave, pokes his head back in. Are you sure you're all right? You're going to be okay? I should be. Not sure yet, but the walk will probably do me the walk back will probably do me a lot more good. All right. Sounds good. Um make sure you get some grub before we head out. I'm gonna go back down and make sure I don't appear lost in two hours. <laughs> and I go back down to uh the tavern with uh Philly and Fiacra. She's writing, isn't she? Uh, yeah, putting together a report of all the stuff that's been going on. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. Oh, now, Philly, do you have any more of those, uh, what did you call them? Uh, uh, cigarettes? Yes, absolutely. Plenty. Fantastic. So, uh, y'all come here often? No! <laughs> God, no! Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, I would like to get a read on these two. Are these two, like, trying to have a conversation with each other? Like, I, I kind of want to insight this. No. Okay, a dirty 20. You guys are gonna oh um you know what i think i misplaced my goblin pony <laughs> he 
he had a goblin pony this whole time. I had I to walk here. That that does seem unfair that uh, he was unwilling to share with the party. Um, I think he thought we were having a moment with my natural 20 insight. <laughs> oh. Um, well. Uh, I'm just drinking until all... we leave. No, yeah, I, I, yes. Yes, I, obviously. Well, no. More importantly, Fiacre, what, uh, you talked a little bit about your motivations, um, but what oh, got yeah. you in with this party? Um, so, I was just, I was just literally passing through, and, and, and I asked, I, it was an entirely coincidental circumstance by which I accidentally assisted these dark, mysterious figures that have been disappearing gods and transporting robot armies. It was, an, it was entirely accidental. I had no idea what they were about. I, I just wanted a little discount at a local shop. And, you know, then there was, there was shouting and there was fighting and one thing led to another, and I I ended up sort of working for a, an inn. I, I, I'm not entirely sure. I, I've made several deals and and gotten my way all wrapped up in Lord Zandro and and Siren Song and God. Hmm. Honestly, at this point, I'm just looking forward to the money when we get back. That will make my travel much easier. My personal goals are best aided by money, uh, as, you know, with many people. And I don't think I've ever seen that much money in my life. <laughs> uh, most things do get easier with a good bit of coin in your pocket. Um, I guess that's why we all do this at the end, right? But to speak on working for the wrong people, that's why you sign up for good union work. Make sure that it's authorized, you get the right paperwork. So even if you are arrested for wrongdoing, you get some leniency on your sentences. I appreciate the advice there. I will, in fact, note that. Um, I, I have mostly been skipping through towns, uh, just playing music for enough money to uh, buy drinks and uh, maybe a bed. Definitely drinks, maybe a bed. Well, you don't need a bed if you can stay all night at the stool, right? You, you bring up a fair point. And also, uh, I'll note that another great strategy for uh, living, fr uh, living frugally is that you don't have to pay for a bed if you go to someone else's. That's been my go-to in the past. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so, you are looking to join us on a hmm. more more long-term basis mm -hmm. why yeah what 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 brought you to what what makes you think that this party is a good idea at all now i'm not going to you know sort of turn down your services because i think that you have some things to offer us but what possessed you to think that this particular group of associates is a good idea <laughs> well uh, one, you survived the mines, even with assistance from the other side. I certainly am no stranger to that sort of circumstance in your lifestyle. And uh, you were dumb enough to go down to begin with, which means you think you're strong, likely are, because you did eventually survive. And uh, you're, you're collectively not very bright. So I think if I can ingratiate myself to you long enough, and give you an interesting enough challenge, we could settle some scores I'm looking at. Well, I was going to take offense uh, because I am quite well read and uh, would consider myself quite intelligent. But then on the other hand, you wouldn't be wrong to say that the sort of average intelligence of the party is not uh, as high as it could be. Oh. 
That's fair. And I probably should have rephrased it as foolhardy. Um, but, you know, in the right hands, one way or another. And an individual can be smart as a dickens. But the moment you get them in a group where everyone's feeling a lot of things and, you know, looking for revenge, you, you tend to take on more than you can necessarily chew. And uh, you run into a minor cobalt god? Is that what it was? Yeah. Look, we're still working out the details. Honestly, I, having no details is honestly one of the things that frustrated Silver and I the most, is that we, mm. we both wanted to investigate a little bit further, and I, I, I think Scott would agree with us on that. Um, mm. So, uh, and at this point, like, Fiacre, like, leans in a little bit conspiratorially. Mm. So... When you say foolhardy, mm -hmm. am I to take it that you're one of those rare people who mm -hmm. has a sense of self-preservation? Well, I do now. Um, once upon a time, uh, two people that I cared about deeply in the world did something for the crown, died for it. I then went to go look for them, absolutely assured that they would have survived, were maybe just a bit lost, found myself in entanglement with a shadow dragon. And that's when I met God. So I've oh. learned. <laughs> um, to be fair, before all this happened, I was just a, a local smith. I was a craftsperson. Uh, I made sculptures. I do armory stuff. Uh, it's through a series of events that I found, we'll call it purpose. I'm on a revenge mission. Um, but I, I believe uh, an old... A uh, friend of mine used to call it, uh, I need to get my grind on as I am too weak to handle the threat itself at this time. That makes absolute sense. And yes, I, I, I'm i quite familiar with several types of grinding, as a matter of fact. Um, so... <laughs> I ask because uh, I ask because I have gotten in trouble with this party a number of times mm. for uh, being willing to make a tactical retreat, um, and I wanted to to you know sort of I, I wanted to sort of suss out what your idea on that is, and it sounds like you understand the idea of a tactical retreat. Oh yeah, I don't I don't get up close to things that want to hurt me. That's not my business. I'm I'm a in the back person. And I, I, I'm not the fastest, but I absolutely will leave if something gets real dire. But, like, ideally, because of what I'm doing in the group, I'm trying to get everyone to go. Uh, but I have ways of doing that if I need to. Wow. Uh, that is absolutely fantastic to hear. And Fiacra tugs on a, a, a leather uh, lambskin glove and, uh, and holds their hand out. I look forward to working with you. Uh, Philly takes it gladly. Um, and gives you a nice, brisk, and firm handshake. Fantastic. Oh, also, I could do this. And, like, I hand you, um, <laughs> I hand you Osha, my cat, uh, and, uh, Osha reaches up and bops, I don't know, I'm assuming you have some sort of bangle. Um, or, like, necklace, and, like, as that happens, the light happens, uh, it casts light on you, and I go, I can also oh. send Osha in if I need to do things that require a little bit of closeness. So I could theoretically be in two places at once. Oh, fantastic. How useful. I think we can, we can let someone else, perhaps, at this juncture take a uh, of a spotlight from me. Mm -hmm. If we could scan over to Llama and Silver. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is there perfect. There is planned, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so, Llama, you're going to see Silver, like, scraping her feet on the dirt. Her face is bright red. She's very angry. Um, and she's muttering to herself, like, like, all this work is for nothing. I'm just silly little goofy goober, little goofy goober silver, never taken fucking seriously. Um, and she's going to look at Mithluda and just be like, everyone thinks this is just some silly little feet gang, but have they made a dedication? 
Have they? Probably not. I dedicated my feet to 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 my journey and to my adventures, and now it's just gone, fucking gone. Nothing to show for it. Meanwhile, everyone's like, "Oh, but that was a failure." They don't know what failure is. Failure is you're on your last leg and you have to ask for help when you hate asking for help. So I'm mad. I am mad, and she's just gonna keep like jumping around and like trying to get her feet re dirty. <laughs> I think just watching this and just kind of letting letting Silver blow off some steam. Uh, and then just after a minute of, of seeing Silver kind of do all of this, she goes, Why is failure asking for help? Don't go there with me. I get you it. Like, bro you brought it up. We don't need to worry about that right now. What we need to worry about right now is that I have nothing, nothing to show for these great adventures. Nothing. And I'm still, still Goofy Goober Silver. You get it. I'm funny. I'm weird. I'm kind of a female version of a himbo. And I love that about myself. But sometimes I would like, I would love to be a part of a boat. But no, Scott has to be like, ew, Silver's head. Boat doesn't count because she wants to make a head out of a puppet. Well, I still have a voice. I am still a part of this team. Yes. Yes, you are. Also, who did you make that oath to? Oh, just one of my river rights. It's okay. It's nothing dangerous. Okay. Why did... I'm, I'm still going to go back to that. Why is your definition of failure asking for help? Do you want to talk about your relationship with Scott? She gets bright red. <laughs> okay, that wasn't fair. That wasn't fair. <sighs> She's like, listen. Mm -hmm. There's That's a reason. what I'm doing. <laughs> there's a reason. It's better if I show you. Okay. Will you at, le at least listen to me on, like, fucking Philly? I, it, I, she's just kind of looking around going, what do you think I'm doing? <laughs> okay, Show me. take off your shoes and socks, please. She does so very quickly because uh, Miss Luna has also been very against shoes, but really only when there's wood involved. But here in the dirt, she kind of pauses a minute before she takes them off. Okay. Can I put my hands on your shoulders? If you can reach. Can you, like... I'll crouch down a little bit. <laughs> All right. How stressed do you feel right now? Um, half good, half stressed, but half, half great. It's, it's a weird... It's a weird, okay, push all of that out from your shoulders, down to your chest, down to your stomach, down to your knees, through your calves, down to your feet and throw it into the dirt and let your ancestors take over. She just kind of blinks. My ancestors aren't here. It's metaphorical. Okay. It's metaphorical, but mine it's not. So when life gets a little bit too heavy or when I feel like I'm going into the darkness and I can't be positive silver anymore, I have my ancestors help me carry the burden. Reminds me that I'm not alone. Nothing. And I have the dirt to show that for because I'm bad at asking for help. I will admit it. Methana turns around. But... You're asking for help from your friends. We, am I not allowed to help you? And she looks not. actually a little hurt by this. No, uh, but, and you can see, you can tell that Silver is like verbally like flustered, like, uh, what? We're, we're best friends. That's what a crew does. We help each other. There's no shame in asking for help when it's one of your crew. Are you ashamed of me? How could I ever be ashamed of you? 
then why is this a failure? Uh, it's, it's not a failure on the team. It's a failure on me. If I, if I fall and can't get back up, then how can I help you guys? What's well, my that's... purpose in all this? If I can't help you guys, why do you even want me around? Why, why, why is silver even needed? Like that is, that's my purpose. That's my point, right? Like if I'm not being silly, goofy, positive, then I have to be helpful. And if I'm not either of those two things, then I have no point of being around. Of course you do. I'm not wanted. What's You're what's... always wanted. I want you here. And just because you fall sometimes doesn't mean you're not useful. Do you know, like, in that, in that goblin, in that little fight with the goblins, do you know how badass you were? Yeah, because I relied on myself and made sure you guys were safe. And? You know, am I a failure? No, far from. But I did fall. And I did take a deal. I did ask for help. Yeah, because you're brave. But according to you, that's a failure. To do what I did to take all of us out of that fight when we would have died is a failure. No, you were brave for doing it. Then why aren't you brave for asking for help? I never called myself brave. So bravery is a failure? No, I'm saying I'm not brave enough to ask for help. Because I don't want to know what that looks like for me. You, my friend, are the bravest person I know because you were brave enough to ask for help. Because you were strong enough to do so. Because you know that you're wanted for more than just your support. I did it for my friends, not for me. Still counts. She kind of flicks you on the forehead. <laughs> this is why Silver doesn't get angry. Yes, I'm talking about <laughs> myself in the third person. <laughs> Silver. Yeah. You can stand in the dirt and be connected to your ancestors without feeling like a failure. But it's all gone. Is it? Truly? Are your memories gone? Everything you've accomplished, is that actually washed away? Or is the physical evidence just gone? Physical evidence and it just feels like I'm a little bit more alone. But you're not alone. You have us. Just because you're surrounded by people doesn't mean you're not lonely. True. Do you feel lonely? For the first time in a long time, no. I can confidently say I don't. But I'm scared every goddamn day that this will all go away. And it kind of pauses, thinks about that for a minute, kind of nods and grips Silver on the shoulder. Then we make it count. Yeah. And then we publish our book of smut. They're in smut again. <laughs> this is all over, right? You know, then we keep... I think we're making we're making headway on some pretty amazing stuff. Did you like what I lie. sent you? Oh, it was amazing. I really loved the parts. Um, you you seem to. Mm, do you have a crush? <laughs> <laughs> do I? Was it that evident? And the which one? Which 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 uh, section were you talking about? Um. Do you have the book on you? I remember the passages, what they're called. Okay. You can just say the uh, passage name. You you mentioned a passage about cigarettes, and we have a new companion. 
Oh, that's right. Oh, rolled mm -hmm. cigarette. That whole like paragraph. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I also really liked two, by the way, as well. I think, oh, but I prefer me, rolled cigarettes. Remind me what two was. I don't know if I should say out loud. There's people around. That's the one about me wanting to be split in two. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and warrior then, dwarves, I like that. Yeah, yeah, and then I have a new one. It's called Bedtime Ritual. I have to, I have to send that one to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You haven't, you haven't sent that one to me. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I need to yet. But that one describes what my body does during my bedtime ritual. And You'll as love I chat it. About, and as I chat about this, uh, Mithuna does kind of pause as they're kind of winding down and looking at Silver going, You good now? Best friends for life. Think you promise? Think you promise. Swear on the <laughs> smut. Best smut friends for life? Oh, you get best smut friends. Although I haven't written about you. Um, I don't think that's my right to do Silver and Llama smut because I'm sticking with like. I'm kind of using this as my journal and just sort of journaling about a specific topic, you know? I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you still need to send me yours so I can paste it in there, so it's fine. I've been busy embroidering. I know, but I know what your main topic is. I think it's just going to be a one-off, though. Uh, she gets bright red again. Um... You know what I'm talking about that no one else knows. Mm, she just she starts walking off. <laughs> Love you, Llama. Love you. All right, let's get back to the others. What do you think we're about ready to start moving on to the travel? Yeah, I I think when Scott ran off, he, he went to go leave everyone to the thing, and he went to go take care of all the logistics to get all the other stuff packed up and anything we were traveling with um, separate from all of our individual gear. So that way, when everyone was done with whatever heart-to-hearts everyone was having, Scott's like, y'all bitches ready to go? Ready as ever. Let's do it. Oh, we've, we've familiarized ourselves enough to call each other bitches. That's fascinating and new territory, isn't that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you want, I could say, y'all bitches plus filigree ready to go? <laughs> no, I, th I think I qualify as a bitch in this circumstance. Oh, I'm quite ready. Quite ready. Uh, anyway, right. uh, Philly, uh, so, so then, anyway, uh, I'll tell you the rest of the story later. All right. Uh, you On have me road. enthralled. I didn't know he, a body could do that. Wait, what? They cast a spell on you? Are you enchanted right now? What? I don't think so. <laughs> Not that I'm actively have... aware of. Don't think I have detect magic. Well, I do. <laughs> oh, but... <laughs> <laughs> gonna, um, I, I pretend to cast it. Mm, now nah, you're fine. Let's go. <laughs> um, when Silver does come back, uh, uh, Osha starts like weaving in between her legs. Uh, and for reference, uh, when and, you're and talking about her. when you're talking about the idea of uh, Fiacra uh, casting sort of charm spells on the party, their face is just stone cold. <laughs> nah. they, they don't even respond. <laughs> Filing that away for later. <laughs> um, Silver will kind of look down at Osha and just nod and keep walking. Uh, yeah. They'll trot after you as we all head out. She'll watch yeah. and she'll smile. All right. I climb up a nearby tree, count everyone. All right, we're all here. Let's go. <laughs> all right. Someone want to roll me 2d12s? And give I me do. the results separate. Okay. Um. All right. Uh, so let's do my spooky purple guy guy first. 
Uh, that is a five, and then my bisexual sparkly dice. Yeah. That is a one. No, oh, no. Stun. Oh. Wasn't I the one that rolled the random encounters last time too? You did. Uh -huh. You did, but remember exactly you rolled a twelve like for that, didn't you? I. Uh, I don't know. We could always go back and watch the VOD later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, short version. Uh, you are technically rolling it at advantage. Uh, okay. So it's a five. Thank yeah. goodness. No so it's help. a five. Uh, All right. Because there's a larger group of you now. Mm -hmm. Your normal five. Uh, sorry. It was a four-day trip that got extended due to weather last time. But your trip is currently traveling out to be another four days. You left on the 4th and you are expecting to be back on the 8th. Day by day, the trip is uneventful. And I know that there is a moment coming up that will potentially be eventful. Mm. Uh, as far as the players have mentioned to me. Yes. Um. Well, I know at the end of the first day, um, Philly starts learning about our routine. Usually when we, you know, somebody starts to fire, somebody sets out the bed, secures the area, Scott and I um, go out to um, look for dinner, pretty much. Um, using my tracking, I point to Scott and I'm like, we will eat for a couple of days if you can get take that down. Seeing a All nice right. gear available. I vanish in the shadows and whoosh, it's dead. <laughs> As you take the head part and I work on getting like the bigger, then I'm like, all right, everyone. As we kind of drop it and go, we'll be eating good for the next couple of days. Yeah. We're gonna need it. We're gonna need a bigger pot. <laughs> yep. But for the first day or two, pretty much we're going to be sick of deer, but not to worry about it. Um, she is going to have a one on one with everyone Silver, Silve, um, Theocra, Scott, and whatnot. And pretty much everything that happened throughout the mines, she's going to get in depth on your perspective from it. So that way, when it comes time, when we get to. Lord Zandros, in case he wants to review certain things on his own leisure, we have papers. It's there. It's already good to go. And um, less chance for us to forget anything on the four days over there. Um, at the end of the night, since I'm always the one to do last shift to make everyone breakfast in the morning, Philly learns. I tell everyone knows by then to leave me a little something that you want cooked up in the morning. That's when you learn that I'm the morning chef. Um, and why I always take the last one so everyone wakes up to something good before we head out. Uh, Philly would have volunteered to take that last shift with you. Uh, and as you're kind of towards like the end of it, start prepping for the food, um, uh, Philly kind of sits next to you and goes, you know, I have a philosophy, and it's not one that I get to practice very often on the road. Um, but I, I'm a firm believer in the hearth and the shared of family. Um, now, 
if you're handling this cooking here, uh, I can offer you a trade of skills. Uh, I, I am good with weaponry. If you'd like those uh, knives you have sharpened and honed, I can get them cared for and re-oiled up. If it was anything beyond my daggers, absolutely. But mm. these ones, I tend to be... To me, these are more than a weapon. These are an extension of myself and my tools. So I I have a certain way I like them. But if it was anything else, like if I was using a bow or something, by all, or like a longsword or something, by all means, yes. No. But these ones, I use this one more than just fighting. As you saw last night, it's also what I was using for the deer. So I know exactly how they cut and get it. I want to. The problem is my favorite chopper I left over at the caves. I had one specifically that had a sharper edge so I can cut through better. But I threw it at one of the goblins. Hmm. That so is I gotta replace that later. Yeah. Yeah. It's make do. Sometimes things break things break on the field. That is true. Yeah. Just let me know if you I need anything. I appreciate it, though. <laughs> Absolutely, it's uh, one of the one of the assortment of things I'm good at. Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm not as good with the weaponry itself. Sadly enough, these were the only things I felt the most comfortable with because they're more than just a, the more than just single use. Hmm. Well, or they have more than one. But I do truly appreciate. <laughs> Huh? And besides, this kind of the cooking kind of allows me to just zone out and actually prep for the day. Makes sense. The the quiet uh, ceremonies we do for ourselves. Yeah, and also I don't see very well as the dark as I'm not as I'm the only non natural dark vision person of the group. So when the sun rises, it kind of I can actually be you know pay attention to see the camp a lot easier. Fair enough. I'm not used to those goggles yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, you mentioned a little bit about your story, but you came here after something happened to your hometown? Yeah, I I went to the main town to make sure the um, story of my what's now a village won't be forgot. Long story short, uh, we made our the town made our last stand, and uh, while we survived, we might as well have lost. We survived a war band assault. Oh. A, a major trading, um, hunting, fishing, wood village. Nice town, about 2,000 people, is now less than 200, maybe 150. We literally, almost, we literally might as well have lost. That's hard. Did you lose, I mean, in, in an event that large, did you lose uh, close personal loved ones or? I the only one I was lucky, I was only, I only lost my dad. My mom was in the tavern uh, helping, using it as a triage. Mm. She ran the tavern. My dad was part of the local guard slash militia. Mm. Wasn't a leader, but he worked, he was like upper in the commands. But she ran the tavern, so when the assault came, she pretty much turned into triage. Hmm. I wasn't in town when it happened. Hmm. Well, I'm assuming hunting at the time then. Hunting with uh, two of my best friends. Hmm. One was, I was hoping it was going to be more, but I don't think that's going to happen anymore. I'm learning our philosophies kind of are diverging at this point. Hmm. Well, um, no stranger to love and loss in those, both those aspects. Um, so 
you have my apologies for that time. But being out on the road, how's that feel? Is it better to be away from your town or do you miss home? Half and half. I mean, at one point, it's now me forging my own path. But at the same time, home is... I think of home as only a shell of its former glory now. Hmm. The only really thing left there is, as you say, is the hearth, my mama. That's really it. Even my um, teacher, the one who taught me how to scribe and all this, he didn't go away unscathed. Oh. He didn't die, fortunately, but he got majorly injured. Hmm. Well, if he's a scribe, did he lose his hand? Because that would be problematic. Otherwise, I mean... Um, severely injured an arm, not the hand, but the forearm hmm. area. Hmm. Girl, some of the twisting is affected, but... Hmm. No, what kind of got me the most and why I learned heavily on how to turn the nature magic into healing was I felt like if I had learned it, there have been more people I could have saved coming back into town. There were people that were alive when I got there. And I could have, you know, even if I could have closed a couple wounds, you know, um, made enough paste or something just to seal it there probably probably could have been anywhere from another 50 to 100 lives if i just learned basic healing techniques that's kind of made me really go headlong into it Hmm. kind of another reason i went back into town was to start studying some of the books for that We all learned some skills a little too late in a very similar situation myself. Um, But we learn them now. We grow. We change. You'll save people, and it sounds like you already have saved people. Physically, yeah, but... There was just a lot of process throughout this whole time I've been out here. Uh, around this time, the Osha the cat jumps onto your lap uh, and just starts purring at you. Um, Without even looking down, I just kind of just start petting. If, scratching behind the ear. If you ever, uh, if you ever want to talk more about this, uh, I'm happy to listen. Um, again, went through something very similar. Um, but I, I promise you, you're not you're not alone in this. Well, if everything goes well, this being the second day of our travel, if everything goes well, um, by the time dinner's done, I'll finally be done with my first draft of the recollection of the battle mm-hmm. and everything. I from the survivors, I had a bunch of leaves. Um, and I was compiling into a pretty much trying to throw into a book, but I wanted a lot of people's perspective, and that's how I learned that even though we all vent, even though we've all done the same thing, each person's different point of view could add a different insight than someone else would have because not everyone pays attention to the whole scene at the exact same time. That would be very accurate. Um, if you'd like, uh, I'm a, I'm a bit well read um not not the most highly educated unfortunately i was more of a trade school uh kid but uh if you'd like me to go over it i'd be happy to catch up on the story maybe clarify some of the information that you all just speak at great length about with no clarification on the haunting sentences you sometimes say haunting oh.
I'm not going to elaborate on some of those because, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was, but yeah, you usually can. I was going to hand it to uh, Theocrit tonight, too, as I also know they're very, <laughs> it, they love their literature. And I'm sure I'm a slower reader, so they can get started, and if it's loose leaf, they can hand me off the pages they finished. Yeah, they're just numbered, um, but I kind of want to proofread something that, you know, mm. I've been I've been working this off and on for the last three, two and a half, three weeks, so this is like the rough draft. I'm very sure I'm going to have to do a couple more revisions afterwards, but at least I want to have it ready before I put it in this as I pull out pretty much a nice leather journal that actually... This is going to be the final version of it, the um, initial one. I, if it's going to be cemented, I want it in something that I can be proud of. Makes sense. And I'm sure everybody needs a few drafts. That's how a lot of writers to go. Mm -hmm. It's also good to have other people look at it so that way I some they may see something I don't. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you two want to do it while well, I do, um, if I don't get it done tonight, I'll definitely have it done the next day. Um, and then you two could look at it while I go do my um, a usual gathering. I just know tonight we shouldn't have to, but we'll be able to use pretty much the rest of the deer at that point. Most excellent. And a solid catch for you and uh, Scott there. Um, we got lucky. It's better than trail rations, which is what I've been eating most days. Oh. If you stay with us long enough, you usually learn that trail rations are accessories to the to our dinners. <laughs> well, ideally, I'd like to stay on with you for some time. I could use uh, people with a good skill set to assist me, and uh, a regular party does cut down on some of the freelance work I'd have to do otherwise. This kind of was my first party slash freelance work. Mm. It's once we've had a couple of our close calls with the party, that's as people can tell me it, I've um, come out of my honeymoon period as an adventurer. <laughs> you yeah. come in all bushy tail, bright eyed, and then realize the world is not as it is, as it seems. It's not all roses with thorns. Sometimes the fucking giant bramble bush, carnivorous. Well, I was thinking carnivorous plant that's trying to bite your ass off, but yeah. Mm. That's the issue. When you're thinking too big, too magic. The real bullshit that fucks with you is the day to day. That's the stuff that real. Uh, breaks. That and bureaucracies. That's why I stay the hell out of it. You got to learn just enough of the rules to know how to break them. There's a reason I like nature outside. Nature doesn't have this bureaucracy. It has its simple, you know where you are in the food chain. Interesting thought process. Bureaucracy is much the same way. Yeah, except it's mostly with words. And the proverbial red tapes or red ribbons. Fair enough. But your dagger should be sharp enough to cut through those over time. All right. I think Most the other. Definitely. As I look, I'm like, oh shit, hold on. I don't want the oatmeal to start burning again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no burning. <laughs> Silver does her typical refuses to get out of bed right away and throws the covers over her head. You just feel a arm uh, reach over Miss Luna and just whack you like, just don't sleep in again. And Touch me and you die. Over and gets up. <laughs> <sighs> Smells oh, good, Neely. Oh, Philly, here's you the got thing. up and helped. I give Philly hers first, <laughs> then I always go. I put the first one in front of Silver because I know by the time she gets to it, it will be um, cooled down enough to how she likes it. She doesn't like it piping hot. Mm -hmm. But the smell eventually gets her out of bed. 
and triggers the bladder. Coffee. <laughs> yes. That's when I have you pour the coffee afterwards and then go, all right, the Ocker coffee's coming up by Philly. Mm. <laughs> That's when I get up for in the mornings. There you go. I know mornings are evil. They start too early. I don't know. I personally I, have always been a bit of a morning person. What about y'all? I'm a morning person, but <laughs> anything that bright and cheery that early in the morning has to be evil. Silver's still in bed and she's oh. eating in bed. She just one bites it. Just scoops the whole plate in her mouth and starts chewing and hides in her little cave of covers. Yeah. Scott oh. has already disappeared. Probably to go piss behind a bush or something. But he's yeah. he's already up and vanished. Like you see the him laying in bed, there, turn around, come missing. back, he's gone. Yeah. The co- he took his coffee with him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Scott doesn't do coffee. He does morning chalky the- milk. <laughs> um, <laughs> it cold. Silver's going to reach out that. towards Mia with just a hand from out underneath the blanket. You just hear the delicate words, coffee. It's coming. Philly's putting <laughs> it out. But you have to get out of bed for that. You know that. Uh, At least without the covers. You have to show, you have to show your um, face to the world. Philly, full, like, cigarette and coffee overhead, just kind of gently wafts so you can feel a little bit of the warmth and smell it. <laughs> you got it. You got to sit all the way up. Got it. Go on. You got it. Philly. Philly, just going to grab the cup. This. Don't I, get out. I have dr- Sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Philly, I can't believe this. I've drank coffee almost every morning of, of uh, that I find myself among civilization. And never once had I tried one of these cigarettes with it. And Philly, my life is different. I'm glad to change your world. As of note, there are tobacco products just within the setting. (laughs) Oh, yes, I know. I'm just uh, right. But like, Fiacra hadn't before now. Like, (laughs) I. Silver will get out of bed for the coffee and the cigarette. And but I she hand coughs you immediately, and then hands I hand, back. I hand you the book back. I made some notes. Oh, cool! And she'll flip to. She'll start, and then she's gonna start writing her next passage as she like attempts to smoke the cigarette and drink coffee. <laughs> I can't remember. Miss Luna does tea, right, or does she do coffee? I don't remember, so we're gonna say coffee. <laughs> okay. Because Katie does coffee, so you know it's easy enough. <laughs> so I think this I go, so I will I get our three coffees, mine, Philly's, and yours. I pull out my little flask and go, Philly, do you need a little kick in your step today? Uh actually we're on the road. I will abstain until uh before rest. Um I just but, put a flash. Yeah, no, that's about right. Um <laughs> uh and Philly just chugs it black. I put a pla- I always I put a splash in mine and um miss like we usually do when we've had especially when we've had harder days like last this last night. <laughs> and go, here it is. It has our fire it has our fire kick in it. We're gonna need I, it. I'm gonna tip my smut journal towards Llama and show her the title of it. And Llama, I will message you the title. If you want to read it out loud, you can. <laughs> Send it to me. We'll see. <laughs> I'm thinking. Oh. Wait for it. Um, Silver, so as all this is happening, uh, Osha like just jumps up and starts sitting in your lap uh, and starts little, making little little kitty biscuits and purring. As Osha does this, uh, Miss Luna just reads out, it's more than just a simple cup, a simple sip of coffee. Um. <laughs> eh. You know, um, probably workshop it a little better. Scott's just like right over Luna's shoulder, rolling up his <laughs> uh, bedroll. Uh, Scott, you've never Luna... read these passages. Only Llama has read these. And out of character moment, Katie has 100% read these very real passages. <laughs> We have actually started writing this uh, <laughs> off of stream. At some point, we'll share them with everyone. Yeah. They're 
freaking hilarious. But yes, uh, I just like Miss Luna, yeah, look Miss Luna turns around at Scott and goes, "You don't like but right? yeah, but a title okay. is still I useful." Need to do this. Um, oh, Mia, so you feel Philly sit down next to you and lean against you, and if you look at them, uh, their eyes are completely glossed over golden, and they're kind of giggling to themselves. And as that's happening, Silver's gonna like hover above Osha and kind of give a knowing glass glance to Philly, like, mm -mm 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 -mm. Is, "Is this okay?" Um, the cat just starts purring at you, and then like kind of nuzzles the paper over, like it's trying to turn the page. <laughs> no, no, no! <laughs> Let's not read that, and I'll start petting the cat. <laughs> You don't want to know how Silver wants to be written oh. to you. That's okay. I Maybe. would love to read some of that sometime, you know. Maybe. I mean. You hear a cackle, and Philly like goes, uh, it's definitely a new writer's work, but it's it's very interesting and very idealistic. <laughs> you don't even know what it's about, she mutters to herself. I can't, I can't confirm, uh, Miss Luna, Leans over to Philly. I can't confirm. Actually, it's kind of fun. Right. It's it's just as good as we've got. We've been reading um, this rat dentist romance. It's really sweet. It's not quite as good as that one, but it's like for a first work. Have you ever read the rat one? I have not, but I Ooh. I have a wealth of personal experience that if you ever want to. Tap in. I'm. I'm sure uh, Biaker over here also has their uh, histories regarding it. Um, we could certainly help fill in those gaps where it uh, fades to black just a little bit early. There hasn't been any fade. To Not that you need to know. <laughs> Maybe I didn't do fade to black. Maybe I wrote it in detail. You will never know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're gonna have to share some of this with the cast. Yeah, we will. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to read it with a straight face. The most annoying really thing, honestly. I just, see, I just see you two use a, use a certain, use a, um, you know, the name writers use when they don't want their name, name to use a like pen name. name. Oh, no, it's it's our name. name. Their pen it name? Is, it's, it's, no, it's our real names, and the title is There in Smut Again, because Katie loves talking so it's instead of there and back again it's there and no one's picked up on that <laughs> this well, is the yeah, first time i heard this title it. I it. no i said well, it earlier i said it on I my didn't, tiktok i didn't there no, I, saw the yeah, I, didn't I got it that. uh for me Katie I, knows I just it because she's guys... seen the actual passages <laughs> and she makes it <laughs> <laughs> I just figure you two collaborating it together, you would use the surname Paint and just use MS. So MS Paint. Oh. Yep, Luna Silver. Wow. <sighs> My last name is gonna be the death of me. Um I mean <laughs> it plenty of it uh, author picture. duos use a single author pen name. Also keep in mind this is Silver and Llama. Do you really think that they're gonna come up with a pen name? Chuck Tingle really out here doing yeah, God's no, work. Not gonna happen. No, that would, that, that would, no they, they're proud of their smutty shit. So yeah. yeah, this is Llama and Silver. What do you think? It, we are um, in I character. Thought, yeah, I we are. It's not, that was the issue. Because like even in the journal, like I put in little annotations like Llama, please help me find a better word than just like flap or <laughs> oh, God. The you're looking for is turgid. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Like we not a not a fall or flap. does it does it does it wave or does it flap like? Oh dear God! But what's so right, funny is they don't know what we're talking about. So out of context, that's yeah. real bad. Oh, <clears throat> Scott is incredibly uncomfortable every time these conversations come up. Yeah. So Lama, what do you oh. think in the context? Do you remember the context? Would flap wave? Flow. What is a better word? Can we think not we... have these conversations <laughs> over breakfast? At least wait till we're on the road for an this hour. Is when my creative, you know, I can stand to listen a bit more personally. Miss Let's Luna also winks. not talk about your personal juices this early in the morning. Yes, Miss Luna winks at Scott. 
and then turns Especially over when you, and he's says, already sober, released and his. says, it shouldn't be any of those. It should be a Fluffle. Oh, Ooh, Fluffle's no! good. <laughs> fluffle is good. <laughs> yes! <laughs> not to mention the words you want, whatever words you want to use for whatever scene you may or may not be trying to describe is going yes. to be very important depending on whatever context of said scene. What do you We're think I'm describing? describing a beard. I don't know. I don't read smut. Uh, I will say you should only allow yourself the terms quiver, throbbing, and pulsating like max three to four times a story, depending on the <laughs> length of that story. I haven't Miss Luna is always important. Miss, Miss Luna turns to Silver. Oh, we've already broken that rule, haven't we? I don't think so. We yeah. use warmth a lot, too. Yeah. Repeated word choice is not a good idea. Tell you what. Why aren't they contributing? Aren't, they yeah, haven't even read it yet, and it's a work of gold. And we need to move on, because I'm starting to get offended that people who haven't even read this don't even know. <laughs> All of a sudden, you guys hear it as I put in the fire out. <laughs> All right, let's go. Thank you, Mia Lee. Uh, Scott finishes and kind of up using his a small presentation to kind of. Mm -hmm. This is her way of kind of steering the conversation when it does this. Usually in the morning, we get to this point where I dump the water and kind of wave the smoke in their general direction. <laughs> it usually causes a breakup. Yeah, we're uh, we're going. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Uh... So unfortunately. That part that you just saw cut out when my computer crashed. Yay, technical difficulties. Anyways, we went into our break shortly after that, and we'll pick up from around there. So, back to the plot. Alright, we have returned. Get that turned off. That's actually... Mess with this real quick. There, now I look right to everyone. I mean, not the people in the call, but to everyone else. And that's what matters. <laughs> okay. Also, for those of you that are watching, uh, that I haven't set it to where you can see it easily, they're back. Yay. Yay. I've been in the process of unpacking and sorting my room and things like my cable climber or my microphone marker, which most of the time ends up being hidden out of sight. Yeah. But it's more for my entertainment than the rest of yours. As it should be. There we go. All right. So the next two days pass without much of any issue. As the third day starts winding through, nearing its end, uh, the party starts getting its things together for another evening. And I will actually let it be jumped over to a few of the Players that had preloaded their timing. Fantastic. Okay. Anyone? Well, the end of end of night three. Mm -hmm. uh, we start winding down. I head over to Fiacra and goes. I've done my first draft with this. If you get a chance tonight, can you please go over it? Uh, and kind of do a proofread on it. This is the first rough draft of the book I've been writing since we've been on this journey. Oh, most certainly. Not a problem at all. 
latest. I'll get started immediately. Thank you. I look over. No. I'm gonna go. Since we have very little deer meat left, I'm gonna get something else to supplement it. Um, but I kind of just. I'll just go out by myself tonight. I just need some time. And kind of without really anything else, she kind of just starts wandering off towards the um, river that we've been kind of following back to Lord Zandros. About a Say. minute or two after she leaves, uh, Scott leans over to Luna and is like, uh, I'm going to... Uh, I'll, I'll be back, and just vanishes mm. into the dark. Oh. All right. Silver snoring, just full on, arm over her face. After a quick hug for Luna. Uh, with Luna hugs him and then just stands up, uh, not stands up, she just kind of sits up going, oh, okay. And she is sitting up to make sure he does come back. So I go like about five, about five, ten minutes. So we just kind of, you know, a distance where they can't pick up our usual trail and whatnot. Um, set out a um, small little fishing net next to the river to kind of catch something streaming through. Um, instead of bringing out my big one, my big traps, I kind of throw out a small couple ones. Hopefully I can catch a rabbit or so. At this point, I just play my waiting game, kind of pacing a little bit um, away from the traps, but to where I just, I start mumbling to myself for a little bit. Um, Scott, you, when you start sneaking up, which she, which I completely don't even pay attention to you. Twenty six on stealth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my own head. Not one. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you notice right before you place your foot. Yeah, don't put your foot there, unless you're really trying to hurt yourself. One of the small traps I laid out. <laughs> it was in the grass for a reason. <laughs> step around. Yep. It's not my big one where you can usually see. It's one of the, like I said, it's the mm -hmm. smaller ones they use for the smaller games, so. Yep. But you literally hear her mumbling for like 10 minutes or so. Walking back and forth, just arguing with herself you could you know when someone's having that self-argument yeah. going back and forth at this point i forgot i've completely forgotten that i'm even chasing game i'm just thinking i'm doing fish again because it doesn't matter with the fish i okay sorry i saw the yeah that's fine. um All of a sudden, so I walk down to kind of check my net and like pick up pretty much one of the stakes I put in the ground that was supposed to hold it. And I'm like, you gotta fucking be kidding me. Really? Can't even get fucking fishing right, you stupid idiot. What the hell am I even doing here? What the fuck am I doing here? I don't belong here. I'm just a fucking hunter who can't even hunt right. I don't shoot animals. I have to use my daggers. I use traps. 
because I know just because I couldn't figure out how to get it done right. I lose my fucking net. Because apparently my dumbass can't even remember to secure it down right. <sighs> Thought about using my fishing line and rod when my ass forgot to pack it correctly and now it's broken. <sighs> What the fuck am I doing? No wonder they liked Philly. They're more useful than you are. That's why. Healing, yeah. <laughs> they just put up with you, Maylee. They just put up with you. But now that you've went down and they had to save your sorry ass. Well, I mean, I don't know about you, but I would do it again. And just right there, he's standing there holding the net. Well, that's because you're batshit crazy. Granted. You drop this. She grabs and starts wringing it out the water. How long have you been... Never mind. I know you are... <laughs> I, I already know. I... Yeah. You had the same look on your face that I had for that first day after we got out. Yeah. Uh, yes. All I know is I'm starting to think you guys would be better off without me. I'm a liability. I'm no fucking I adventurer. I'm barely even a fucking hunter. I yeah. did nothing to help the town. I did nothing except just I wanted to run away and thus why I went to Mandan. I the, home isn't home to me anymore. It's a fucking show not just of that, it's also She just starts getting mad and just literally kind of throws the net out of complete and utter frustration. And then starts chasing, go back to get it. She's. Um, Scott hops over. He's like, you just, I'll, I'll get it. It's okay. It's okay. Please, Scott, Scott I... grabs it and pulls it back. I was a pencil pusher, you know. My job was to sit around at a trading port and don't tell anyone else in the party, but my job was to take the stuff I found out, what was coming through the port, and send word of it back to my hometown, my little village. I'm not supposed to be out here either. None of us are. All I ever came out to here to do was to finish up that damn book and leave my little piece of history the t so that way at least Riverside never got forgotten. But I'm no damn adventurer. And the night with the bugbear show really emphasized that to me. Bugbear? Especially... Owlbear. Oh, oh, the owlbear. I was wondering, did you run into some bugbears at your old village, or...? Owlbear. 
the out, but I, I, I caught up now. Yeah, yeah, sorry. See, I can't keep this shit straight. <laughs> I just know that no matter what I do, as much as I wish it, I cannot go back to my old life. My old life is gone. But I am... Um... Yeah, I get that. I'm just a fucking fifth wheel here with y'all. Each of you know what you're doing. Each of you has your goals. I'm literally the note taker. <laughs> oh, don't you, you be think... laughing, short shit. You know what you're doing. You're, you think I you know what, what I'm doing? doing? If you don't, you're you fooling think... me very well, fucker. Yeah, that's the job. None of us know what we're doing. I got my ass ripped apart by an owlbear from behind me, and I had to make a deal with an ancient vampire titan to get my life back. If I had done my job right, you would have never had to deal with that fucking owlbear. Well, I'm pretty sure I was I'm... the one who was supposed to keep my eye out that night. And you have saved my life before. Yeah, after you almost, after you pretty much lost it. But that night, there was no way in hell. I tried talking to the fucking thing. Instead of doing what you all were, the right thing, what you all were doing. I tried talking to the fucking thing. Yeah. Like one of my you best did. friends would have. And I realized her point of view is not going to work out here as much as I want it to. It fucking sucks, doesn't it? Life sucks. Yeah? Period, sometimes. And at this yeah. point... But... All we can do I... is... Suck it right back. Wait, no. That doesn't make sense. I'll tell you this right now. If, if that attack happened to me and I was out... I wouldn't come back. There's nothing here. He's very, very, he's very pretty convincing. Maybe, but... Okay. I have no reason to come back. You don't? Right now? No. I'm pretty much lose, losing most of... Pretty much all I have left is my mother and I'm not even sure I want to go back over there y'all talking about failure or what not especially silver it... you didn't see your you didn't see nothing but dead bodies fires coming back seeing some of the people you've known since birth die in your fucking arms because you didn't know the anything about healing you didn't know any basics not even basic first aid on how to properly do a bandage but i knew some that maybe i could have maybe fucking gotten a few of them but no to seeing all of them i could have done something even if i wasn't in the initial fight even if i came in after math like i did if i at least knew some of the basic stuff maybe more people would have survived instead of being the mess it is now. Seeing everything soaked in blood and fire. Yeah, you got me Absolutely. there. I've never seen that. But I have seen you speak words of encouragement. I've seen you fling those blades really nice. And he pulls out his little notebook. It's because of the notes you've been taking that I'm able to put a lot of this together. I think I've almost got another day or two. I'll be able to set everyone down and put together what we've got so far. But that's because of you. 
That's all I do is fucking write. That's all I'm good for here. No. I mean, yes, I started to try to learn the healing stuff, realize I can't do that. After the hour bear, I learned nothing but anger. Mm. When I'm chucking those blades, when I'm using my daggers, I'm not caring about the healing except for y'all. I'm going, I'm putting myself in harm way because now I'm looking at getting re revenge on everything that ever happened to my fucking family, to my town, the life I fucking knew. Happy in my own little corner of the world. And then it all now I can't came do, down. and I can't even do both of them. I tried to blend the two. But what did I do? It, it got my ass fucking knocked out and almost a party killed. Because I had... It did It didn't. Because one of your friends... Let me repeat myself. One of your friends made a choice to protect everyone. You made a choice to protect people. You got hurt from it, but then one of your friends stepped in and helped you back. We aren't alone in this. This is the kind of... I, I get where you're at. I do. I really do. Because she made a choice that I could have made. A and so, like, I already had to deal with that, or I'm still dealing with it. it the point right I'm now, trying to make is we're all part of something. Even if we can't do one thing really, really well, we can all do a lot of different things. And when we combine all the little things we can do, we can do a lot more together. I can't tell stories like uh, you and Fiacra. I can't heal people like you and I'm assuming Philly, which, by the way, to be honest, I don't fully trust her yet. So I kind of still want you hanging around watching my back. And like, no one can track like you can. I, I can hunt and kill something, but I need you to help me find it. I'm no good at tracking in the wilds. I can't do that on my own. God. I also know, realize how alone I truly am. Friends are great in one thing. But I'm looking at all of you. You, Luna, Silver, and Theocra, possibly. Philly, I have no clue what they, they just... And none of us do. Going. But I'm the fucking third wheel. Or the fifth wheel in this four, or in this four wheel wagon. I thought I was going to be able to have somebody when I got home. But I'm realizing our, our paths have split where they'll never be able to merge back together in a way that would be compatible. Yeah. I doubt I'll find anyone who can understand the world like we do. That's for and when sure. I see, when I see you two groups, it, I'm just realizing I'm going to be alone for the, probably the rest of my life because I you 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 think the rest of us don't feel alone sometimes? I do. This whole time, I've been I've been lying to y'all. I've been feeling alone, too. Because I could never tell any of y'all who I used to work for. Which, by the way, I don't know if I still work for them because the deal I made with Vampire Titan, do, do, like, none of us have EVC corollaries. It's a fucking mess, Mia. It, it's, it's just, we're all trying to figure it out. We're all lonely. 
We're all trying to think that we have to be useful. We have to be important. I still think that. Because if I'm not useful, what's the point of me being here either? So but when the, the way you guys talk, when you when we you guys sign feeling says yay, we actually have a healer in the group. It took everything in my willpower <sighs> not to fucking flip the table and yell at you guys. What am I, goddamn fucking chop the liver? Yeah. Bear droppings. I sacrifice a lot of my power so I can try to make sure you guys stay up. And You're I'm right. not even that great at that. And then when she, when they walk in, yeah, I, it took everything for me not to walk out then and there. And I didn't right. care if another owl bear came and ate me. I wouldn't have cared. Mia, I'm so sorry. I, above all else, should have seen that. Because you may think you can't heal that well. But in truth, if it wasn't for what little you could do, our story might have ended sooner. I didn't know. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I just don't know what I'm supposed to fucking do anymore. Because I came so gung-ho on just learning this, making sure whoever I work with... Yes, I'm no goddamn cleric. Yes, I'm not. I can do who can do all those magical stuff and make the potions and stuff. I just know the basics. And even then, I'm not even... Yeah. I've only started to read on just simple herbs and shit. I haven't even gotten that fully figured out. Yeah. All I know is I learned... That village is what caused the spark for me to learn to take mm -hmm. what nature magic I was trying to learn from my friends and actually that's what caused me to learn the healing stuff is just seeing all that death destruction and I do not I didn't want that happening here and it hasn't but but when you think you I picked up a that. bow and shoot a wings off of a fly at a hundred paces? No. I had to practice. And by the way, I still can't do that. Don't don't let me overinflate myself. We start somewhere, Mia Lee. At the very fucking bottom, and we claw ourselves to the very top. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here either. It just made me feel like a fucking outsider. And that's yeah. when I really noticed the relationships in the group. I was oblivious to it at first. But once I saw what that, relationships? then there I saw the relationships. Thing. What are you talking about? I ain't stupid, Scott. I have no idea what you're talking about. The connecting. The relationship. By the way, genuinely, you... Scott has no idea. <laughs> you don't think I see you and Luna? Come on now. What? Uh, no, it's, it's just a. It's... All I know is I started with one thing, and then ever since the Owl Bear incident, my focus completely shifted, and then when I try to go back to what I thought I was supposed to do, mm -hmm. I, okay. I don't know. Yeah, I don't 
don't know. We don't know. I... It... And if I'm not sure about myself, that makes me a fucking hazard to the group. And I'm not I do sure. not want to put y'all makes... more in danger than, we already, than you guys already have to. Especially with this rescuing of the gods and things. I... Mia, you're the only person who I can go hunting with. I don't trust anyone else to do that. What Luna and I have in common is the deals we made with big forces, but you, you remember that whole thing with the journal back in that temple in the mine? Yes, and then that's where Silver kind of started chasing Theocra, yes. Yeah, and well, during that whole thing, we were in the bodies of those gods. I was apparently inhabiting Kiki. Now, I don't know what impact that'll have on my life going around, but I know that you were, were, I don't know if you still are, a follower. Yes, I do. I do follow her as I would consider her different, like a protector of the forest type deal, friends with animals and whatnot. And every time we do the hunts, that's why I say a little prayer giving thanks. Mm -hmm. Because they, was, the animal gave up his life to make sure we sustain ours. I was never a hunter. You are. You know how to respect nature in ways that I don't. I was never even that great at music until I picked up it was a fluke I learned about the Orc Arena. A, a trader came in one day. I saw yeah. something weird that everyone didn't use. And somehow that game naturally... I don't even know. I experimented with a damn thing. I tried guitars, drums, lute, and all that stuff. I have the coordination of that stuff, like... An elf mm -hmm. trying to beat a damn um, uh, adamantium. Okay. It, 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 it don't work very well. But it was the only thing that clicked. I don't sing. I can't. Hell. This is the best. I lift up the net. This is the best thing I could carry a tune in. It's it, It's horrible. It's More than me. Don't do it. Mia, I, I, you keep telling me that... Yes, and you... you keep trying to make yourself... You're trying to make me feel better, and I get it. I know... You're trying no, I'm to not trying to make you feel better. Eyes. I'm trying to see... You have all these things that you say you can't do well, but you still can do all these things. At this point, Silver is going to jump up because she notices Llama's perched. Um, Llama! Oh, yeah, sorry. Llama! What? what? What's happening? Hi. Why Why are you awake? It is like, I don't know, crack ass early. And we need to what? finish the night. We need to finish the night so we can sleep and I can get my coffee. So this is Silver, 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 Silver. Why, like, why, Lama's, Lama's why are we there. sleeping? Because Lama's, it's still eight or nine at night. It's yeah, still Lama's, early night. This is the evening fishing before we go to bed. Sorry, Philly. Mm -hmm. Lama's was sitting startled. there with her sewing needle and thread going, I, Scott wandered that way into the forest. Why? We need to get him a bell. I don't. <clears throat> he Philly, can probably you, um... get rid of the bell. <laughs> Philly, can you like stick a cat on him or something? Ugh, 
Fuck. Yeah. Um, and I, I wave my hand and uh, Osha kind of just trots off where they last saw them head off. All right. Okay. Can we, can um, we, can we go back to bed? Apparently well, that's happening. Excited to crash early. <laughs> um, Scott's saying, but you can still do all these things. And sometimes that's important. Someone can do a lot of little things. They may not be a specialist at any one of them, but they can still do them. And besides, I don't know much, but I know this. We have a fucking story happening. And someone needs to tell it. And I know my writing is as dry as a fucking desert. And I don't trust Silver or luna bless them to write it because they'll be talking about all the naughty bits someone needs to tell our story someone needs to help me hunt someone needs to strike with the knife at the right time someone needs to make us stay in line and not go willy-nilly burning the forest down Someone needs to keep us on track. And guess what? That's all the stuff you've been doing this whole fucking time. You don't know what to do? Just keep doing that. Until you figure it out. None of us knows what's going on here. We're all just trying to make it up as we go along. But I think you're still involved in this. And while the choice is yours, I think you would be doing yourself a disservice in the memory of all those people lost. Because if you just tried to go back home, what do you have for it now? I don't even have anything at home anymore, really, except mom. Yeah. So, stick with us. Keep looking. Pick us up when we fall down. Help us find some real good food in the evenings or in the mornings. Because, I'm, I'm sorry, but your omelets are fucking banger. When we actually have the damn eggs. That's true. I got but lucky finding the nest that day. Yeah, that's true. But they were good. And that bacon that one time. Mm -mm -mm -mm. She chuckles and that's like, that's why I bought the little, my little combination of seasonings when we were in town. Exactly. I can, it, it, it can make shoe leather taste like a steak. Yeah. You, you. You think Silver's going to be I'm able doing. to cook something like that? I mean, bless them she all. Would, <laughs> she would try but, to probably eat a, a tree bark. Yeah. And I still don't know Philly's deal, so we'll just kind of put a pin in that one until we figure out more about that That's one. That's the wild... They're the wild card at the moment. Yeah, they're the wild card. And, again... Love them all, bless them all, but whatever Fiacre cooks is going to have a name about 20 paragraphs long. They're, they're the ones that are useful when we have to go present ourselves to the higher-ups and whatnot, because I look at them and I'm just thinking rich snob. Yeah. And you and I are the ones who are useful when we need to actually survive off the land after those rich snobs don't give us shit. Well, it seems like this land... Lord Zandro's actually... better than some of the other lands I've heard. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was just trying to... For, for example, just... Now, mind you, some of the other people below him might not be as... carry or <laughs> prefer their coin coffers higher, but... The... The tavern yeah, when they're is under real good. Let's just not be against her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not yeah. saying her, but I do know of a few places that would care about 
no, their coffers being full, but when they're under siege and all their food's gone, gold is not going to sustain a person. Yeah. That gold coin is not going to prevent that arrow from being punctured into their heart. Exactly. And that's why we need you. Because if we ain't got gold to buy food, we have you to help us hunt. By the way, your traps are real good. I nearly stepped in three of them on the way here. Oh, so shit. one of two things them. happens. Either uh, you hear a meow and a cat vanishes from existence. Or a cat then runs up and climbs uh, a scod like it's a climbing post. And gets real close in your face and screams at you. I think they were wondering where we are. So, pack up your shit. Come back to camp. It's late. Yeah. Hey. It's, there's and nothing Scott here. reaches and he, up a hand, takes yours in a sort of camaraderie manner, and it's like, none of us know what we're doing, but we cannot know what we're doing together. I guess we have to have our own craziness like everyone else we're, we're, we're traveling with. Exactly. You point, I shoot. Sound good? And if you can't shoot, Silver can charge. Exactly. Or Luna now, can just um, try to cast something and the next thing you know, um, shinies appear. Yeah, yeah, the unicorn was a real fucking weird one. Ugh, I thought I was drunk. And... Or I got hit with... You... You as we're saying, say as you they start learn... picking up my traps. Yeah, yeah, as we start traveling back. By the way, you did say you wanted to learn a little bit of nature stuff? Or yeah, magic? One where... The magic I'm getting... You know, the more that I'm using it, the more, but it's just, I only can do so much magic in a day. Mundane stuff would be being able to properly bandage, you know, find a couple herbs that, you know, make a good healing paste. Even if, even if it doesn't okay. necessarily heal, but it doesn't make it worse. Things like that. That part of living off the land, I haven't been able to figure out yet. I just learned on survival with food and what not to eat and what not. Well, I propose a trade. I try, probably will fail because I'm not good at it, show you how to do stuff like this, and I use druid craft to make a little flower appear, a purple rose, as usual. Um, and you help me learn how to track and stuff so we can back each other up. Let me figure out the how to teach because I was never Yeah. That's totally fine. That by great me. on it and we'll see what we can do. Yeah. However long it takes. But I think I scared all the game away, so yeah, tonight's a failure. Good thing we still had meat left over. Yeah. Hey. Sometimes we screw up. But we learn. Holds up a fist for a fist bump. Buddies? Boom. Buddies. All right. You can run on back and tell your master we're coming. You can run you can run with the kitty if you want. With Osha if you want. I'm just gotta get the other one that's hiding over here. I'll be I'll be the only couple minutes behind. Uh, I gotta the... set them off to make sure that they don't um snap on my bag, snap on my waist as I um we yeah. walk back. I'll I'll stick uh, with you. And the I cat fully scarves and like digs its claws into you and lets out a warning yell. <laughs> I look into the cat's eyes, red ringed with purple cores and then the normal eye color. Are you being rude right now? It bumps you with its head. <laughs> okay, being rude. Um... And then I stick with Mia Lee helping find all the traps and we eventually make our way back. Yeah, it only takes like five minutes tops just between yeah. getting them all and uh, disabling them. Simple stick, poke, yeah. and taking the pinion out, but 
we come back and the only person that's probably still alive, awake is Luna. Or whoever well, depending else Depending on how with. late you get back. But <laughs> I think it would have only been like a few minutes after the cat about a... is latched onto my shoulder. Well, then yeah, we I'll were say... only gone. Go ahead. You were trying to get dinner, were you not? Yeah. Then, then Fiacre is uh, reading the book and uh, just hears you enter the sort of clearing and says, Well, it took you long enough. What's for dinner, darlings? Leftovers, and well, you're going to be thankful for it. <laughs> there, I got you, me. Don't worry. Nothing here. I, I couldn't even find veggies to even spice this up, so... Give me a minute, I'll just throw some of my stuff in my pouch that I got. I'll at least make it, it may not be a whole lot of meat and stuff, but at least take, at least make the broth taste good. Um, the cat jumps off a of scod, fully, like, springboarding claw-wise, and trots over to Sylvain and, like, flops next to them. Just walks right out of the game and right into real life? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Not, oh, not so sorry, Fiagra. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Just walk, walks right into real life and comes to hang yeah. out with me. I mean, he's very friendly. <laughs> Your cat is very wow. rude. Hello, darling. Uh, I go and sit down on my bedroll uh, right next to Miss Luna. And I'm like, what are y'all looking at? We just had to... Uh, lost one of the traps. I accidentally sprung it. She had to help me get out. That's all. You're being Go. awfully suspicious, Can but I that's fine. Can I do a, an insight check on that one? Okay. I'm assuming that would be a comparison deception check? Uh, maybe. It depends. Well, do I have to roll or not? <laughs> it's not up to me. I am the DM. <laughs> well, I would agree with the... Like, are you actually trying to get the sus out of that? Yes. And are you wanting to... Act maybe, maybe check. not. I'm rolling a charisma check. I'm just not telling you if it's persuasion yeah. or deception. Send me... <laughs> well... Uh, Scott, send me your result. Will do. Of your charisma check. Okay. Let me do my inside check. I'll do the same. Uh, and I rolled a gentleman's 20. Nice. I That's rolled a... Yeah, I think Philly's in the same category of like, I'm going to pretend like this isn't happening, so it stops. <laughs> yeah, Fiacre, it's on you right voice. now. <laughs> over, yeah. my, over my face. Fully. Like full actual roommate situation of like, if I, if I pretend like I'm asleep, they'll eventually stop having mm. sex. <laughs> so, um, I sent the message over. Okay, cool. Appropriately. Uh, yeah. Anybody who, yeah, I'll I'll trust that because, uh, unless otherwise had... told, you're feeling that Scott is being honest on you. Yeah. Just. Just two buddies uh, taking care of hunting supplies. And they were roommates. <laughs> Fiancro yeah. waggles their eyebrows at you but says nothing. Um, let me one more thing real fast. You just see her just working on the pot. That's literally all I'm doing as the is reading. See, and as they're gone and they come back, Miss Luna's sitting in her bedroll, 
stitching into her coat. She's been doing a lot of hand embroidery while people are sleeping. And she's got a couple extra hours that the, the mortals don't need. Mm-hmm. There we go. Um, Scott leans over. What you, what you stitch in there? This is my fleck. She says that she spreads the coat out and cuts one of the threads and just spreads the coat out and you see the stars spattered all over the inside of her coat. And there are different embroidery portions in different parts of the flag. I'm embroidering the big moments in my life. You have a flag too, yeah? Oh. Uh, I, well, individuals don't usually have flags here. Like there's a flag of a country or a lord, a banner, stuff like that. Yeah, but people don't usually have their own flags. Then Families do sometimes you, do. Where do you keep your story? And that's why I have friends like Mealy. We write them down. Or we hmm. tell them to each other. She Books. lays out her coat. She lays out her coat. Uh, and you see kind of on the inside is... What's your, what's your passive... Hold on, what's the... What's the team... Passive investigation. Looking at oh, investigation. Coat. That's only an eleven. <laughs> oh, guild. Would that be enough for Scott to realize what the what the no. stars are? Uh, no, because uh, by technicality, it's at disadvantage because that is not only a because uh, yeah. that that's a completely different culture. You're talking to someone yeah. who's so been a- born and raised in Duskin. Uh, you're you're talking to someone who's been born and raised. In, in a the, town outside of a town outside of <laughs> yeah, and also the fact like you're from Hordun, and yeah. these are those traditions that you're mentioning of with your oh, with the fact that a family has a flag. That is something only the Azir have. that they're like you're as a character you're starting to realize of like oh this is this is definitely a cultural difference not everyone has a family flag of important moments in our lives that face was not towards you guys my employee is messaging me right now go to bed Go away. Um, and Sarah, uh, Sarah knows exactly which employee this is. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, um, but Scott looks point, at it and it. As a point uh, of order, as Guild is talking about this, there have been other moments in the story where Mithluna has taken her coat off and shown the inner lining with these stars and almost used them as a moment to throw stones as a form of divination or other things, um, but has never carried through with any of them. But there, mm-hmm. there have been moments where she has taken off her coat to reveal these stars. They are very much sewn to the inside of her coat. Um, I think Scott remembers that one time, but it never ended up falling through. He's just got this look of sort of... Uh, small wonder the kind of small wonder a child has when they just see something cool for the first time um well tell you what maybe sometime if things settle down you can teach me how to do this how to sew a flag in this way we don't do that here how do you, you you remember it by books? 
Yeah. Writing, telling stories. So smut is Different. telling. Oh, those are fiction. So it, it, I see the confusion. So books can do both. They could be fiction or reality. But and the relationship between it? fiction and reality is interesting. But that's another time. <laughs> Lava looks over at Fia and goes, "Oh." Yeah. Another time, then. Oh, what? Thank That's you. Like, I would like to point sorry. out, and Silver's now talking through her pillow. For someone who's never read my material, you sure have a lot of opinions. Now, please, please, either I make wasn't... out with each other or go what? to bed. What? What is she talking about? Mm. You know what she's when... talking about. I... When a goblin likes a elf very much, sometimes they do a special kind of hand holding that can I... result in the expulsion of several fluids, not limited to, <laughs> but including saliva. God, you should really read those smut books. <laughs> um, the of you glands. Um, I have some diagrams from when I was first learning anatomy lessons. I, I'd be happy to share them with you. Whatever. Um, Mia, this is pretty solid food. Don't feel bad. It's actually pretty good. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Now let it, just sim let it simmer overnight and let the spices fully kick in, and the morning will be even better. Mm. Ooh, yeah. We'll save some for the Remind morning. me, Philly. Remind me, Philly, uh, when we get up for the stuff, I gotta throw the rice in immediately so it can have enough time to absorb the rest of the water to flavor it up. All right, yeah. Get up early to wash the rice. Got it. Silver will roll over, open up her journal, and write the next passage. passage. Death to a local goblin. Period. <laughs> <laughs> will he be saved by the mythical elf? Question right mark. in your ear, you hear, I'm not local to this area, so that doesn't exactly work. Get away from me! <laughs> <laughs> Um, speaking of notes, once we get back and settled in back at the manor, holds up his little notebook. I've been putting some stuff together. Got a last few things to talk about. But we'll discuss that. Uh, but once we're all settled in, I'll tell you all about it. I'm going to bed. Crawls in and gets in. Now, no, now you go to bed. Are you kidding me? You're already. Are you kidding? Me? Now it's okay. <laughs> someone for you to, go to, bed. Needs to run. Our warrior, they get cranky before bed. You need to let them stretch their legs, and then they'll call, they'll tucker themselves right back out. And Silver will do as she told as she's told, and she'll take out her axes and just start hitting the tree over and over and over again until it falls over. Stomp back to her bedroll, glare at Scott again, and pass the fuck out. <laughs> Deforestation is really rampant in this area. Is you're right next to Luna, right? Yes, I'm always right next to Myth Luna. Yeah. She's my best friend on the so, entire planet. So it's when you have silver. to glare at Scott, you're having to look over Luna because Scott Luna is right on the other side. But Luna knows because Lama and I are best friends and we have that inter... Con no, no. I'm just giving you an idea of where everyone's laid out in the camp. But basically what he's Thank saying you. is that Scott used to not yeah. be part I, of the sleepover. I was always kind of uh, off on my own. Uh, now I'm right next to Luna. Yeah. So you have to do the death stare to him through Luna. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. fine. I get that. <laughs> but if I'm not glaring for that, I'm just going to whisper into Llama's ear, if you two decide to get freaky now when I'm right next to you, I'm going to kill both of you. I don't care if we're best friends, but best friends tell the truth. I thought you wanted to do research for your smut book. 
Mm-hmm. By watching you two, that's you just hear a it. snort from uh, a few feet away. <laughs> just like I was hoping to do my own research on my own time with my own person, not watching my best friend and the Goblin Man get it on. Uh, I which, highly which recommend one? while we're on the road, if you're not going to excuse yourself for a qu- quickie in the woods, that you do not do so in a group setting unless that is really your thing. But you should get consent from everyone. Yeah, around you, the Philly. bonfire before that happens. Thank you, Philly. Especially when there's someone laying right next to you. At least invite me, for God's Honestly, sake. Honestly, guys, I have no idea why you bring this up. I'm just going to sleep. Why also, are you guys the, making such a big deal back of to this? sanitary things, we really gotta wash our hands before we start touching each other's bits, because that's how you get infections. <laughs> also, Lava, I'm offended you didn't at least invite me. Like, you just assumed I, I would just lay here what, and do what? nothing. What? <laughs> Where am I? I was, I was making a joke. Well... I'll no. be down for a show if that's what you three are going to get up to. <laughs> I didn't know it was that kind of party. I have to rethink not, all the plans. I'm just trying I had. to make Lama uncomfortable. And it's okay. Oh, and conversation over, taking, y'all. This is enough. Is taking a, a blanket and taking her coat and just covering herself in it, going, I thought it was yeah. a funny joke. It was not a Scott's, funny joke. Scott's already lying over. Joke. He's just like, y'all, I'm trying to go to bed. Please shut up. In the morning. Everybody hit the goblin. <laughs> We're all going to hit that? N- never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. <laughs> Only Myth Luna is close enough to hear Scott chuckle at that joke. <laughs> and Myth Luna right. gets very pink hearing that. Yeah. Oh. But because Scott is going to bed first, he's also joining the two of you on the last watch, but he goes off on his own. So when all of you wake up, Scott is gone. He left a note saying, I'll be back. Again? Um, My familiar doesn't have to sleep. If you wander by yourself, the cat will follow you. Yeah, he doesn't go far. Just perches up somewhere, watches the sunrise. Yeah. He cat knows not up. to go too far and get himself in trouble. He has learned that lesson. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, the question is, does he have to bring Osha down from the tree afterwards? <laughs> he can't just get back down. Just into his back. <laughs> just, <laughs> he's like, just get on. Yeah. The evening goes without any issues. Morning comes, and your last day of travel passes with... <clears throat> Not even any fanfare. At the end of the... Oh, by the end of the fourth day, you finally arrive at the manor here in uh, Duskin. And uh, perhaps just as we are rolling up, uh, would be a good time, yes, Guild? Or which one? Uh, the thing I, I sent you that I, I wanted to, very quick, just wanted to get out of the way. Uh, as we are about to meet with Lord Zandro. Uh, the most recent message you sent me? Oh, no, it was actually, it was actually during our last session. Let me, uh, uh, ah. Well, then I have lost that note temporarily. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, that. Um, that is... I wasn't sure if that would be a good thing for now. That is still something I am not able to give a proper ruling on at this moment. Okay, I, I yeah, I just wanted to do that before, um, before we meet with Xandra, but um, that's all. Yeah, the actual, like, proper meet with Xandra is going to be next session. Okay, fantastic. Because we have the meet with him and then uh, 
the stuff that we'll be talking about after session for okay. the next sessioning range. Sounds good. So, yeah, uh, you get to the manor and you are able to get checked back through the process of getting everyone uh, new rooms set up. Uh, the innkeeper uh, slash bartender for uh, the Raven's Roost is same person that you've seen every single time that you've been in here. Bill agree, this uh, barkeep is a human. Uh, hmm. Fairly nondescript, middle-aged barkeep. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm I'm Filigree uh, Goldbrand. I'm uh, assisting the party. Very good, very good. I'm guessing that you're going to be wanting a room then. Uh, yes, to myself, please. That would be fantastic. You can get that arranged. Uh, he rummages through and hands you a key and writes down a note into a little bit of a, into a small notebook. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, right. uh, do y'all need me for this meeting or are you getting that sorted out? Um, I, I pull, um, I believe Fiacra told me about it uh, last session. I pull Fiacra aside. Um, is is this the one that's the dragon? It, I think that is it. Yes. Um, no. Is it the same person? No. Okay. This I, person I is. Uh, this is the same barkeep, uh, mm -hmm. which. Right, uh, right, right, right. Uh, above the table, uh, metal knowledge uh, is one of several changelings. Uh huh. Uh huh. I. I. Yep. I, I got it now. No. No. Uh, no. Not at all. Oh, is uh, this the one I awkwardly hit on? <laughs> no, you uh, awkwardly uh, hit on one of the uh, uh, succubi. Oh, that's right, because Scott Over gave me that really bad flirting advice that I will never use ever again. <laughs> yeah. No, this is the... Uh, so, as a uh, catch-up point for uh, Philly, uh, something in my setting that you would have come across at least once by mm -hmm. this point, uh, a family of changelings to make ends meet usually assumes the persona of one or two people and the entire family mm. runs those one or two people so while this is fairly nondescript barkeep multiple people mm -hmm. are this fairly nondescript barkeep which means that sometimes he will treat you differently this is a out of character right. reference in character it takes a bit to figure yeah. it out no, no no uh i was saying the person i'm sorry i should clarify the person they're meeting is that the emerald dragon no the person you are meeting is uh lord xandro cormuth a high elf okay, okay. uh yes oh uh, uh so uh, I was just going to answer your question. No, so we are going to be meeting with Lord Zandro. Um, Lord Zandro is uh, someone uh, for whom I have worked for some time, um, and the party was only recently contracted uh, with. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I can point out the dragon to you if you like. Uh, if you could make an introduction, I, I have some questions for them. I, I've heard of Lord Zandro. He, uh, he's the one who signed your original paperwork um, by himself, which is very interesting. Anyway, uh, but yeah, if we're while we're in town, if you could introduce me to that Emerald Dragon, um, that would be tremendous. I have some questions that I need to look into. What? Am I able Why to hear this? Interesting. Hmm? Oh. Okay. Well, I, we'll, hmm. Lord Xander signs off on all sorts of quests, but mostly like, oh yeah, clear that thing out, not much care, kind of off to the side, you know, scribble, we're not yeah. paying attention. Uh, that signature on your contract is someone who was paying attention to what they were signing. I've had a lot of contracts, yeah, and none of my know. contracts have had that attention of someone looking directly at a paper when they signed it. Also, you know that the... Uh... Uh, you notice that the contract's um, uh, guild representative mm -hmm. uh, signature is his personal assistant and liaison to the guild. Yeah, and that's a that's a a, a pretty pretty important PA signing off on that guild membership. So you uh, you garnered attention, and that's very interesting. Uh, that's also clear by the fact that you're given uh, an audience with a broker. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, that's uh, it's going to be a very interesting meeting, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, I'll be available if you want me for the meeting with Xandrin. If you feel like that's too much, I can sit out. Uh, but if you could, I, in town, I'd like to meet this. Uh, again, I'm speaking so, like, the staff doesn't hear. Uh, but, like, I'd like to meet this Emerald Dragon. Um, but otherwise, I won't have too much to report regarding your excursion itself. Oh, yes, absolutely. I, I'd be more than happy to introduce you. And uh, if you get lucky enough uh, when I go to introduce you to the dragon, you may also get to meet uh, a dear friend of mine uh, and another one of my uh, employers, uh, Izzy, who uh, is, has uh, some intimate knowledge of dragons. Um, if that would interest you. Izzy has, yeah. Uh, Izzy stayed mostly behind for this particular range. But uh, as future note, Izzy will be technically a part of the party uh, just off to the side from this area just forward. Off screen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they will be uh, Mark the Red posse. for the future. They're posse. Uh, no, uh, they're, they're, they're Mark the Red. Uh, blood... <laughs> Death and vengeance. Uh, everyone, uh, please watch the gamers. Like it's it's such a good movie and totally worth okay. it. Uh, well, uh, honestly, at this point, dragons are kind of uh, a sworn. Well, one dragon is a sworn enemy. I never thought about. Uh, maybe. I mean, maybe if they're I in your. I mean, this one didn't kill me when they had the chance. Struggling with anatomies, but like, I got, I got a pretty wide reach, Pendant. I'll the try anything are... once. Yeah, right? I eh, might as well. Can, can I ask you, how do you become sworn enemies with a dragon? Oh, uh, one that kills your father and your fiancé, two separate people. The fuck? By oh, the way, uh, at that oh, exact not, moment, Philly, you hear in your mind... Well, that just sounds rude. <laughs> That's tragic. Uh, I'm uh, responding sorry. back. Like I zone out for a second of the conversation, and I respond back in my head. It it was. Who oh, may I ask is speaking? <sighs> I'm assuming this is not a voice I heard in my head. No, before. you've not heard before. Um, not one of the usual voices in your head. <laughs> when you ask that question the uh the door to one of the private rooms in the bar opens up and there is a young woman standing there and she just waves to the party and then looks directly at you and says that would be me yes Billy, here you are that that's her uh, 
Telling stories, yeah, okay. I see. Uh, well, you God, don't become an adventurer because everything's going great in your life. Uh, I I don't remember. Out of character, the player does not recall uh, this this person's name, but Fiacre would would make the the formal introductions. Uh, yes, as I pull up the proper word document. Oh gosh, what's it called? Nope. Too far back. Yeah, nobody's asked mm. why Billy. Mm. Oh, I feel like that's coming. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Here we go. I have the notes for it. See, Miss Luna is uh, used to watching oh these other my. knuckleheads wander ah, yes. away. Yes, Susan. Yeah. yeah, Susan. There it is. Susan, the Susan Emerald Dragon. Billy, Susan, uh, love meet Phil Agree. Phil Agree, meet Susan. Thank you, Scott. Now my voice was in stereo. <laughs> like, this whole time, Scott's just been edging away, just like stepping away, getting out of the... Just not stepping edging. away from filigree. <laughs> uh, uh, the cat, like, trots over and, like, starts going between your legs, fully attempting to trip you. You are now the cat's full special interest. Um... Uh, Philly kind of like gestures to the rest of the party and heads over, extends a hand. Uh, nice to meet you, uh, Susan. I'm, I'm Philly Gree Goldbrand. If you'd like to call me Philly, you can. Um, but formalities are also fine. Young Goldbrand, it is a pleasure. And she holds out her hand. Note, she looks like she's like early 20s. Um, uh, yeah, Billy knows enough stories and would have done research post the event um, to be like, yeah, this is a lie. Uh, takes a hand. Um, is firm, but not like aggressively so, and just kind of shakes it. Um, uh, nods and like heads, if she's inviting them into the room. She, yeah, they would go she, invites, no, she invites the party into her side room. As a note uh, for the rest of the party, there is more artwork in here than there was last time. And oh. almost all of it has been I replaced. I love what you've done with the place. Well, I like what I do. I see uh, you all yeah, made it back in one piece. More or less. <laughs> Some of Ms. us Luna, have come back Ms. changed, Luna but is all of us are in one piece. Slipping behind everyone else. Even though Silver's shorter than you, she's going to try and give you extra coverage. God is <laughs> like, doing the same. Billy is confused. <laughs> <laughs> confused? Philly is confused. Uses confusion is very effective. It it is. Um, I I'm confused how you could just say that your father and your fiance died and with the roll of the tongue and not expand much on that and act like it's just another Tuesday. Well, I got I'm sorry that happened. Well, I got interrupted uh, with a a thought conversation. Um, yeah, yeah, that's uh that that's how I met. Uh, I was I was telling Fiacra a bit about this. Um. Uh, my father, uh, Flint, and uh, my fiance, uh, Star, they uh, they were not in service to King Goldbrand, uh, and they were getting reports of mysterious things happening <laughs> under the mountain. Anyway, they went to go investigate um, and didn't come back. <laughs> uh, I, I was working for my grandpa at the time uh, at the Smith shop, and then I did my, my own... Uh, uh, my sculptures on the side, and that was my, that was my, that was what I was doing beforehand. And uh, when they didn't come back, <laughs> everyone was like, "Oh, they must be dead." Uh, and I didn't uh, believe that, so I went to go find them. Um, please understand that up until this point, I, I was just a smith. I I couldn't fight for anything. Uh, Star used to try to teach me all the time, uh, and so did my dad. Uh, and I just, I, I, I was never good at it. Um, 
I, as just a craftsperson. Uh, anyway, so I went to go find them, and in the bowels of the mountain, you know, as you want, a uh, big, big, big shadow dragon. Um, and it was when I about died uh, that Hordon Sulvacur uh, came and got me. Anyway, uh, since then, I've been able to do, uh, the, and like, they cast light. Uh, I've been able to do a little bit, um, but I don't, I don't know. So I've been studying, uh, I have, but I, um, I, I'm not a trained magic user in a traditional sense and I'm a, a mage in a traditional sense. Um, it, 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 it's because it's a, a god, it's also different than like the arcana magic from what I'm understanding. A anyway, it's, oh, yes. but I'm not a cleric. Or, or a healer in that sense, but I know I can do heat. Anyway, it's it's been a lot. Uh, yeah. Well, well, I'm sorry. And thanks, thanks for um, telling me so that way I can help you carry that load. But just so you know, oh, you said that you were just why your cat talked so weird to me that well, one time. Hold on, buddy. <laughs> I have to get this out. <laughs> um, <laughs> To circle back, it you said you're just a craftsman. I don't yeah. think that's true. I think you're also a survivor. And you did everything you could that you thought was right in the moment. And I know I'm not Star. I think you said that her name was, right? Star and your dad's name is Flint. But if you uh, ever... Go ahead. Yeah. 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 Um. Well, technically, Starlight after the stone. Um, her family, and we grew up together, and uh, yeah. Um, well, if you ever want someone to teach you a thing or two about self defense or fighting, I can always help you. I appreciate that greatly. I have, uh, I've had truly some of the best teachers try, and uh, with my whole nine dexterity, I show you how <laughs> uncoordinated I am. We can uh, work with that. No, I have faith. Uh, I do too, apparently. <laughs> or he, he has faith in me. It's oh. complicated. I get it, but I've worked with Stiffer and I've gotten them to work themselves out, so we'll be able to figure it out. Well, uh, it does it does definitely bode well for you in this party that your future at a point of crucial uh, conflict was your fate was changed by a powerful magical entity because I think that may be one of the things that is uh, beginning to be uh, almost a party identity at this point. Yeah, the the story as, sounded familiar when we first met. So as soon as you say that. Susan just looks at all of you, her eyes narrow for a moment, and then her just jade green eyes turn solid orbs of emerald for a split second, and then she just pops out of existence in front of you. So do, do we uh, do we wait or well, are we, is this how we die? Uh, oh, we'll do, be quite all right. Anyone trained in Arcana me? is allowed to make a roll on yep. that. Yep, yep, I can do yep, that. Can I pretend? Not... <laughs> can I pretend? Um, Sadly, no. As everyone does that, and they get their roles in. Scott says, and I didn't even get to tell her about the other scarecrow we ran into. Oh, shit. I forgot about that. Uh, this is also, like, the first time that you've seen, like, Philly go from, like, this big bravado to, like, <clears throat> grabbing the stool and, like, kicking their little feetsies that are probably off the ground as they kind of sit awkwardly and shuffle in their chair. Um, hey, Guild. Yeah. 
I'm gonna use ties of chaos. Oh, okay. In the, in I didn't. I didn't room. send you your new dice yet. I haven't. No, you did that. I need no, to I get thought. them and, in the mail. They are packaged, and I just and need to it, wrap them up. It and gives for you Arcana, an advantage. And for Arcana, I got a gentleman's twenty. Oh, <laughs> I got a hot seven. <laughs> Can I use my jack of all trades? Yeah. Yeah. Can I pretend um, I got sorry, a submissive I spoke twenty? To some apologies. Are you trained in Arcana? I'm pretending. Unfortunately. The submissive is just like, okay, <laughs> not quite first a natural was, 20. Just submissive. First one was a 13. Unfortunately, I for not being 20, trained. Oh, I got 20 minus a zero. <laughs> yeah. That's what Jack of all trades Second does. one was a 21. No, I was saying, it's like, I got a 20, but just dropped the zero. I got a two. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. 21. Uh, Sylvain, uh, sorry, uh, Fiacra and Myth Luna. This is the first time that you've seen it in this particular way. Like, this is a different version of it, but she basically just used Misty Step. Fancy. Hmm. Okay. Mm. Yeah, but well, she's used it in a way that you've never seen before. Like most of the time, you see when someone uses misty stuff that they actually turn into like a mist or something like that, and she just popped out of existence for a moment. Yeah, because normally if they use misty step, don't they have to go to some place they can see? <laughs> yes, I was just going to say well, it must be a special version because of that too. Yeah. Uh, the, there's a lovely combination when you mix Missy Step with, uh, other fun factors. Though, uh, actually with that, uh, uh, Philly, yeah. I'm gonna have you not even roll you. You've been described on this before. A few times. Mm -hmm. um, Silver's camera just turned off temporarily. That was weird. Like, you moved and the I camera went. hit my space bar. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but uh, Silver and uh, both Silver and Philly notice the factor of uh, her eyes turning green for that short bit. She was looking through the eyes of a familiar. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I would, I would, I would recognize at least a part of that. That's why I was wondering with the the green effect, the jade, and I was like, mm. no, no, her eyes are uh, like the irises yeah. of hers are naturally a jade green, but they turned right, but they solid emerald. Green. Yeah. Point of clarification. Oh, sorry. Why would Silver notice that, or did you mean Fiacra? Silver would notice that because you were standing right there when um, the familiar's eyes went, uh, when you saw the gold in oh, right, uh, right. Philly's eyes when she was using uh, oh, yeah. the same trait. Like you were She's going to keep that right to herself, there. though. That she noticed Philly's eye color and this happening at the same time, so... Okay, that makes sense. Diakra, of course, whirls when they notice that it's Misty Step to, to see if that it was somewhere nearby and then was like, huh, well, isn't that a neat trick? I wonder, uh, uh, I do hope that we did not offend our, uh, our lovely to, host. To clarify, this was by her choice and we don't need to, like, prepare for an attack or anything, right? Fully correct, yes. That that did okay. seem to be just a casting of a spell. Um, the, the narrowing of the eyes and the stepping away. I can't help but think that perhaps she went to go say something to Lord Zandro. But... Think... Who knows? Well, do you think the, the powerful uh, dragon would mind if I light a cigarette in here? Because this is a private room and I don't, I don't see an ashtray. I'm assuming that they, they're not allowed to smoke in here. You know, I, I was going to refrain so because of the art. 
Really yeah, you're it? starting to, uh, as you look around, you get the idea that lighting up a cigarette would probably not be a good idea, seeing as there's a lot of artwork, like, all uh, over. She draws and does painting on... Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, as a way to, like, keep themselves busy, Billy's gonna start, like, methodically hand-rolling new cigarettes to replace the ones that have been actively bummed from her. <laughs> It was just kind of like, well, like finds a flat surface and just starts methodically going to it, and like everything's fine. And uh, yeah, no, uh, uh, family's <laughs> dead. Grand, well, no, grandpa is still alive. Back in uh, Sarah needs to go look. Uh, hold on, two seconds. I have it in my point of clarification too. Wouldn't oh. technically that be Peepaw, what? not Grandpa? No, we yours that... is Peepaw. No, nope. I thought we declared that as Dwarvish. Uh, Peepaw is Dwarvish. Yeah. Uh, uh, you have a peepaw. <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, yeah, my peepaw <laughs> is back. Um, hold on. <laughs> nope, I need to find my description. Uh, backstory. Uh, he is back in. Da -da 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 -da. God damn it. Geopolitics. Uh, <laughs> border between, uh, uh, Duskin and, uh, Barkas. So north of where we were, towards the mountain, um, under Noctu Drago Mountain, which, yes. as a small note, uh, something that I should have been describing a little bit more to the rest of the party, far to the north on clear days, you can see Noctu Drago Mountain. It the mountain range looks like a giant sleeping dragon. It's kind of like looking towards the Rockies when you're almost anywhere in Colorado. Uh, or, you know, near the mountains. Yeah. And, like, it's there. You can't help but see it, and it looks like a giant sleeping dragon. Okay. Yeah, so I, I live under the dragon-shaped mountain, which it makes a lot of sense that there was a dragon under the dragon-shaped mountain. I'm not yeah. saying mm -hmm. that it that did, tracks. like, all, all the things didn't line up. I'm just saying that I thought it had long since been dead, I didn't know I'd find it. Or hey, that we all make mistakes with dragons. Uh, I once tried to sneak after Susan when she left once last time we were here, um, and she caught me. In I fact, mean, that's where I barfed when she teleported me back here. Uh -oh. I mean, that's also when Izzy told us about the time that they fucked a dragon. I yeah, I missed that say. story too. You did. Uh, it was such a good one. Here. It was a good it was, one. It was so Very good. educational. I I and wanted to know start, more. And thus their smut writing career started after they heard <laughs> that one. Oh no, that started the <laughs> bookshop back in May. Oh no, no, no. They started the reading of it. They started the writing of it afterwards. That's when they got inspirations. Fair. That's that's very and smart. Perspiration. That's fair. Inspiration points. <laughs> Billy, uh, you, if it would help me pay you back for taking so many of those uh, off of you, uh, perhaps you could teach me how to, to do what it is you're doing now so I can pay you back for that. Oh, uh, I, I'm happy to teach you, but uh, this is kind of a, I don't, I don't have access to the forge as much anymore, so this is kind of one of those uh, calm emotions for me. But yeah, and, and like Philly oh, would fully. walk you through it. Uh, as someone who has like explained a multitude of processes before, like the does the quick, does it step by step, does it quick again, and like has you follow along again step by step, um, but like methodically walks you through it. Absolutely, um, and uh, Fiacra with a plus two to dexterity, uh, it doesn't take them too long. Yeah. Um, if Philly learned how to do it, you can learn how to do it. <laughs> well, uh, I fucking love um, Philly. Philly is amazing. There's a <laughs> there's a table in the middle of the private room, right? Yeah, just like there was a. It's yeah. a very it's uh, a fairly small room. It is designed okay. for. All right, who all here has seen the show on Netflix, Peaky Blinders? No, I have not, but I'm familiar with it. Uh, they have a. My sister was obsessed with it. There's a room just off the side of the main bar that they have, where it's just a small standing area. 
Uh, and then a oh, fairly yeah. large table with a bench that wraps all the way around it. And there's like one or two yep. chairs like available within there to where you can wrap the entire table in seating. Mm -hmm. And that's and also there's a window that goes from this room to a spot behind the bar to where you can open up and basically have bar service right there. Yeah, so it's 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 very cozy. Yes. Yeah. Reverse so drive through. They come to you. Yeah. Uh, there is also, uh, uh, as a uh, reminder note to you, as well as introduction notes to Philly, uh, the two suits of armor that is very, very well dated back to mm -hmm. uh, the Red yes. Lotus Barony in my notes. standing, just, just standing in the corners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, y'all, I guess while we wait, Scott goes over, plops in one of the chairs, pulls out his notebook, flops it open to a page. Maybe I should explain to y'all what I've started to figure out. And I'm actually going to call us there for tonight. Because okay. uh, we have some things we need to do off table for preparations for next session. Perfect. Thank you all so much for joining us. I do apologize for the technical difficulties that we have had. Hopefully I have some ability to fix some of the issues that I've had with my computer as I continue to fix up the chaos that is my new room. Until next time. We move. Thank you very much for joining us. We will see you on the first Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Be well, roll safe, and enjoy the tavern. Hey y'all, it's Friendly Neighborhood Goblin Scad. Thank you for watching this episode of Tales from the Ten Lands. If you like this kind of stuff, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so we can let you know whenever we post a new session. You can also catch us live every first and third Tuesday of the month at 6.30 p.m. Central Time over on twitch.tv slash Black Barrel Tavern. Until next time, be well, roll safe, enjoy the tavern, and yes, I am right behind you. <laughs>